time, I would ask everyone who's able to please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, for the record, would you uh, confirm that we have a quorum for this evening? Yes, Mayor, we do have a quorum for this evening's meeting. Uh, President and Council Chambers, we have Council Member Estev, Mayor Pro Tem Wolfley, Mayor Adams, Council Member Brady, and Council Member Truesdale. And via virtual uh, teams, we have Council Member Rogers and Council Member Ndebumabu. Thank you, City Clerk. At this time, I will entertain any motions for agenda additions, deletions, or amendments. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make- Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, remove item A from old business, uh, table that until our next full meeting. Okay. Okay. Second. Okay. All right, it's been moved and properly second. Any discussion at this time? Hearing none, call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. Aye. Opposed, same favor. Motion carries. Are there any other additions, deletions, or amendments? Hearing none, we'll move on now to citizen participation. City Clerk, do we have anyone signed up to speak? No, Mayor, we do not have anyone signed up this evening. Okay, thank you. All right, at this time, we will go to presentations. It is a true honor and privilege this evening to swear in. Uh, I don't even, I am so excited about it. Uh, our new Deputy Chief, uh, Rachel Jefferson, and our Deputy Chief, uh, I mean my, our Captain, bear with me, Rob Liberati. Liberati? Mm -hmm. yes. I got it right. Rob. All right. At this time, uh, Council, if you would, please join me down. Uh, at this time, uh, Deputy Chief Jefferson, will you please come forward <coughs> to be sworn in? Excuse me. I love the drama. <laughs> Deputy Chief, I'm on my way down. I, state your name. Uh, Rachel Jefferson. Do swear or affirm. Do swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And that I will. And that I will. Be faithful and bear true allegiance. Be faithful and bear true allegiance. To the state of Maryland. To the state of Maryland. And support the Constitution. And support the Constitution. And laws thereof. And laws thereof. And that I will. And I will. To the best of my skill and judgment. To the best of my skill and judgment. Diligently and faithfully. Diligently and faithfully. Without partiality or prejudice. Without partiality or prejudice. <laughs> execute the office of. Execute the office of the city of the police department. According to the Constitution. According to the Constitution. 
and the laws of this state. And the laws of this state. Congratulations. Thank you. It's a little low. Uh, thank you, Mayor, Council, City Manager, Chief, for acknowledging my hard work and dedication to this gem of a city and men and women of our department. And I am very honored and excited to continue to serve as Deputy Chief. Thank you. I would love to, to read a little of a bio about you, if you don't mind. All right. Rachel Jefferson began her career in law enforcement with the Metropolitan Police Department, D.C., and transferred over to the City of Bowie Police Department in 2008. She is the first woman to promote up the ranks from officer to commander within the City of Bowie Police Department. She serves in her position and oversees the daily operations of the department and several projects, such as the Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Unit, the Strategic Tactic and Response Star Team, constructs policies and procedures, and in the accreditation is the accreditation manager for CALEA, the law enforcement accreditation process that focuses on standards that provide best practices related to life, health, and safety procedures for the agency. Deputy Chief Jefferson, number 038, attended Pennsylvania State University and the University of Maryland, earning a bachelor's degree in psychology and a master's degree in human services with a concentration in counseling. She is also a graduate of Northwestern University's School of Police program that helps separate experienced law enforcement prof <laughs> professionals <laughs> for success in senior command positions. Again, congratulations. Thank you. Deputy Chief, if you don't mind, can we move over here from the flag and get a couple of pictures with you? Come on, Jesse. You can take a couple right here. Come on, Jesse. Trying to hide in the background. Huh? I just want her to sign. He appears. It is. It is. There you go. There you go. I know. All right. Thank you. Robert B. Liberati, Jr. Uh -oh. sworn in as captain. You can come to this side, and the council can slide a little bit, and we can do it this way. Here we go. All right, I go with the area. All right. It's not official for now. I state your name. I, Robert Liberati. Do swear or affirm. Do swear. 
that I will support the Constitution that I will support the Constitution of the United States of the United States and that I will and that I will be faithful and bear true allegiance be faithful and bear true allegiance to the state of Maryland to the state of Maryland and support the Constitution and support the Constitution and laws thereof and laws thereof and that I will and that I will to the best of my skill and judgment to the best of my skill and judgment diligently and faithfully diligently and faithfully without partiality or prejudice without partiality or prejudice execute the office of execute the office of captain for the Bowie Police Department according to the Constitution according to the Constitution and the laws of the state of Maryland and the laws of the state of Maryland congratulations Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mayor and, and Council, uh, Mr. Lott, and uh, um, all the administration here for giving me an opportunity to serve uh, this great city, which I've lived for, for all my life pretty much. But thank you so much, and uh, uh, I, I really appreciate the honor. Uh, before, I'd like to read a little brief bio on you. Robert B. Liberati Jr. began his law enforcement career with the Prince George's County Police Department, where he served for over 30 years before retiring in 2016. While with the Prince George's County Police Department, he served in many roles, including commander of the Crime Patrol, Crime Scene Investigation Unit, commander of Records Management Division, commander of the Pol Patrol Enforcement Division. He then served for two years as the Director of Automated Traffic Violation Enforcement System for the City of Baltimore. In 2018, he was selected as Chief of the Town of Landover Hills Police Department. Captain Liberati, number 130, graduated with a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Maryland and graduated from the FBI National Academy. Captain, we welcome you. Here you go. If we can get you, Chief. <laughs> Chief, she's trying to stay out of the picture, but you know. All right. Congratulations. Congratulations again. Let's go pose for a picture before the flags. Everybody keep moving. And you know, as Mayor, I'm going to say, 
Uh, would all of you please um, go up right there in front of the flags? We're going to come around and we'll take a picture up there as well. All right. Thank you. If you want just the officers first, go right ahead and then we'll come. One slide more this way. Oh, we've got it down. All right. All right, now we're going to roll. I'm going to roll in front. And Please, Councilman. Am I okay like this? Certainly. All right. Am I blocking anyone? You could. How's that? Y'all can smile. <laughs> <laughs> it's like our wedding face. <laughs> One more. Oh, there's. Some. All right, Tammy. Smile. Yeah, one. Yeah, another two. Here we go. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. 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 Right. Thank you again. City Clerk, do we have any city address? No, Mayor, we don't have any for this evening. Okay. We will now move on to council announcements. Council member is Steve, and anyone on the on the video? Uh, I do. Yes. Okay. You might want to go. Go ahead, uh, Councilwoman Rogers. Go ahead. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to make a couple announcements. One, um, last Thursday we had a State of the City. Um, breakfast and legislative update uh, hosted by the Greater Bowie Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we had standing room only, 68 folks showed up. We were expecting about 40. Uh, it was well attended and everyone um, really got a lot out of the session. So I thank the city for their coordination with all of that. Uh, the other thing I'll mention is that the Green Expo was back this weekend, the first time since COVID. Great turnout. I had an opportunity to um, do the opening remarks. And um, I'll just say this. We should treat the earth as though we intend to stay here. Um, I'll, that's all I'll say about that. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is that the, the mayor and the uh, city council is hoping to, uh, hosting a gift card donation drive um, to help the Bowie families that were impacted by the recent home fires. Uh, the drop off for the gift cards for from our community. Everyone can participate in this. We are our community uh, is at the Bowie City Hall and uh, it will go on this week uh, till Friday and then Monday uh, from 8.30 to 4.30, 8, 8, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. So every donation helps our neighbors. So I hope everyone intends to participate. Thank you. Those are my announcements and I thank you, Mr. Mayor, for the time. Okay, I will now recognize uh, Council Member Emda Bamadu. Uh, I, I, 
I didn't see your hand raised at first, so please go right ahead. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. That's completely okay. I want to say good evening to District 4 residents and City of Bowie residents. It's an honor to be here this evening. I'm very excited for this budget work session. Um, congratulations to the city on the State of the Union. I know that was a well-attended event, so I just want to congratulate Council Councilwoman Rogers for assisting with that and the mayor who gave a really great address. So thank you for that. I do have a couple announcements that are, that are um, applicable to the broader city of Bowie community and specifically for District 4. It has been a busy few weeks for District 4. Couple of things. First of all, um, I do wanna share that a couple of days ago, we received a number of complaints from District 4 residents regarding the Hyundai dealership that sits off of Mitchellville Road. Essentially what happened were there were a lot of large sound testings and lights that were facing the residents in Glen Allen, the community Glen Allen. There were large lights blinking into their light and it provided a safety hazard where residents were so blinded by the light because it was so bright at night and it was very difficult for them to be able to assimilate into their homes at night. I did work with the Hyundai dealership owners and those lights have been repositioned and checked in with the Glen Allen Homeowners Association community and wanted to let them know that the Hyundai dealership will be reaching out to the Glen Allen Homeowners Association dealer, uh, community to organize a community meeting with you guys to really just have further discussions and honestly offer their sincerest apologies for that experience. So I do want to express their apologies for any disruption that those lights and the large sounds may have caused any, any residents. So I'm sorry about that. The other thing is that I've received over the last couple of weeks a number, a number, a number of complaints regarding South Lakes commercial development. I know that that has been top of mind for a lot of District 4 residents. A lot of residents are very upset with the Giant being the anchor grocery store, and I know we've known that for some time. However, I am setting up a meeting with the South Lake essentially uh, development owners, which is NAI Michaels, to meet with them next week to really amplify the concerns of our residents to really see if there is a different model that they can apply to their commercial development footprint. I have been in contact with County Council member Ingrid Watson on that issue, and she is also having um, conversations with the Michaels company. And, and I know the mayor has been in touch with them as well regarding the complaint. So thank you so much for your support there. So I do want to assure all residents, I know one just texted me 10 minutes ago, we are working on it and your complaints have been received loud and clear. So definitely working that and hope my colleagues do keep that in mind in terms of commercial and economic development going into this budget cycle. Moving on to the five that happened in Penn Manor. Um, I want to let everyone know that I have spoken to the owners of that house and the family. Um, their son is doing a lot better and it has been a shocking and startling shock. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, there was a fire on Penn Manor Lane and I did have an opportunity to speak to the father and they, they just, you know, are really going through a tough time and recently relocated to the city about a, a year to two years ago. So it's been just a difficult assimilation for them and just a tragic a tragic experience where their child was transported to the hospital with third degree burns. So I do want to let everyone know that that any support, heartfelt, uh, good vibes and prayer that you can send that family, please, please keep them in mind. So I have been in contact with them. The other um, last three exciting comments is that really great news. This week, I will be meeting with Secretary of State Susan Lee, as well as Secretary Kevin Anderson, Secretary of Commerce for the state of Maryland. Um, I have the honor of hosting and welcoming my governor from my mother's home state in Nigeria, who will be visiting the United States this week. And so we've set up a series of meetings. For those of you who don't know, 40% of the black owned businesses in Prince George's County are owned by the Nigerian population. So we are super excited to have the most popular governor in the state and in the country of Nigeria visiting us this week. And I look forward to working with the Moore administration on just some ongoing movements. We will be hosting myself and County Council member Bligay. We'll be hosting a business roundtable, which most of the Bowie, um, the Bowie business owners have been invited to this Saturday. So we will be hosting that top of the morning, super early for people to have an opportunity to meet the governor. And I look forward to reporting back on any 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 partnerships or anything that affects the city of Bowie that comes out of the meeting with the Secretary of Commerce as well as the Secretary of State. So stay tuned on that. We also did meet with the Elder Oaks community a couple of days ago where that developed 
developer who was essentially posed to put a storage unit in District 3 um, essentially was met with a lot of opposition and we were able to turn that around. I know that Council Member Truesdale as well as um, as well as County Council Member Ingrid Watson was in that meeting where the developer did unveil his plan to put two by two units in that parcel. And so I know there were some key community leaders who organized and led that meeting. It was really, I think it was really pleasant and went really well. And so I look forward to hearing the unveilings there. And the last uh, update that I do want to give is County Council Member Watson and myself have been working really closely in terms of those who have been impacted by any fires in the city of Bowie. Her office has been securing additional resources. There were some residents, uh, 12 in particular, that were impacted by the fire who did reach out that I was able to get on a quick call with to align resources um, to support them. For those of you who don't know, the Red Cross typically only provides housing uh, support for up to about two to three weeks, uh, or most insurance companies only provide it for that short amount of time. And essentially many of these impacted residents are having to pay their mortgages and also go out and find temporary housing like apartment units as well for them and their families, which has put a strain on a, a lot of their economic, um, economic footprints. So we have been working to secure uh, resources. I know County Council Member Watson is doing a needs assessment right now. I have connected her with some key leaders who have been impacted uh, by the fire that are working with the community to make sure that those resources are aligned and she has a clear, accurate picture of everybody who has been impacted and needs the help. So thank you, Mr. Mayor. Those are the totality of my updates and I look forward to the rest of the meeting. Thank you. Council Member Steve. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, she stepped out a little while ago, but uh, uh, Mayor Adams uh, acknowledged uh, Ms. Kathy Prez earlier, who was sitting in the front row. Uh, chief Prez was the first Bowie police chief uh, back in 2007, I want to say, when the department was first created, and it was just three officers uh, literally operating out of a trailer behind the Ken Hill Center. Um, and actually, uh, Chief Prez reminded me that she hired uh, Captain Rachel Jefferson, who we just promoted tonight back in 2008. So an awful lot of... Um, uh, Bowie history was in this room this evening, and uh, it is uh, the first person that Chief Perez hired was our last police chief, uh, John Nesky, who stayed with the city for the entirety of his career um, and the entirety of the police department's existence uh, until his retirement. Uh, that's a rare thing. Police chiefs don't tend to last a very long time, and officers don't tend to stay with the same department for a long time. Bowie's an exception to that, and I just wanted to commend our police department for their tremendous work. They really do stand apart. Their culture is unique. Uh, they are uniquely open, uniquely transparent, uniquely proactive working with the public. And I know it's a tough job to deal with a lot of constraints in the day to day. It's often thankless, uh, but we do really appreciate them. And I just wanted to take a moment to acknowledge that. Thank you. Thank you, Council. Um, Council Member Brady? Yeah. Well, let me see which one is that. Just <laughs> Thank you, Mayor Adams. Uh, three brief items uh, that came out of uh, most recent public safety committee meetings um, on, I can't read my writing, um, the uh, next Community Matters meeting uh, with Chief Preston will occur on the 24th of April at Fairmont in South Lake beginning at 7 p.m. Uh, this will be the third one that he has scheduled with the public and so far the first two have been well received and I suspect this one will continue to be. Um, on the 27th, Saturday the 27th of April, the uh, Bowie Police Department has scheduled their drug take, take back program here at City Hall. Uh, it'll run from 10 until 2 in the afternoon uh, at the Police Department on the backside of um, City Hall. And then I'd like to was also ask if uh, we could, uh, as a uh, body, uh, do a proclamation declaring May 12th the National Police Week and maybe have the chief and deputy chief up here to receive that. So those were three things that came out of the Public Safety Committee meeting. That's it. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, thank you. Any other council announcements? Uh, if not, I do want to say uh, thank you again to the Bowie Chamber of Commerce and for city staff and all who participated in giving the State of the City speech. Um, I think the State of the City, uh, we were able to declare to everyone that the state of the city is strong at this time. And so again, to staff and all of you, I want to say thank you. Uh, you did. Uh, along those same lines, I would be remiss if I didn't 
uh, say that the volunteer fire department had their banquet. Uh, and I would like to continue to encourage uh, residents of the city of Bowie to please look into volunteering with our fire department. It, it's a community and an area that we need support in. Our volunteer fire department is, is, has served us well, and we just need to look to have more added to the ranks. So if you have any friends, family, uh, anyone that you think would be interested, please mention to them to really look at joining uh, part of the Bowie Volunteer Fire Department. And of course, anyone you know who is interested in law enforcement or just serving the public to make sure they think about becoming a police officer here in Bowie. So thank you with that. And now we will move on to the city manager's report. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. I'm City Council. I have no report tonight. We're ready to dive into the budget. Thank you. Thank you, City Manager. We will now move on to the consent agenda, and I will entertain a motion. I'd like to move to approve the consent agenda. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 All opposed, say in favor. Motion carries. I would remind our uh, council members to put your vote up. It's, we're done now. But <laughs> I will now move on to old business. I know we removed item A. Is there anything else? So we will now move on to new business. Uh, and item A is the introduction of the ordinance 0424 and resolution R1224. Staff will introduce, introduce the fiscal year 2025 budget. The fiscal year 2025 budget ordinance and capital improvements program for fiscal years 2025 through 2030. I'll turn it over to staff. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening. And Council, H. Byron Matthews, Finance Director for the City of Bowie. Uh, this evening, we'll be introducing Ordinance 0424 and Resolution R1224, uh, which contains the uh, Physical Year 25 Budget Ordinance and the Capital Improvement Resolution. Okay. No other. All right. At this time, we'll have more questions when we get into. You have something right now? Go ahead. No, I'll just make the motion. Okay. First, I have to see. Uh, I'd like to at this time open the public hearing. And do we have people signed up to speak? That's right. Okay. Uh, first, we have Danette Wynn. Oh, and Francisco. I apologize. I was right under me. Please go right ahead. Good evening. Good evening. Good seeing you again. Good to see you all again. Thank you for allowing us to speak tonight. I appreciate the opportunity before you uh, regarding the fiscal year 2025 proposed budget. My name is Danette Wynn. I serve as the managing director for the Maryland Women's Business Center. And accompanying me this evening is Francisco Cartagena, our program manager for our city of Bowie office. Since our founding in 2010, the Maryland Women's Business Center has been committed to supporting women and marginalized communities in establishing and growing successful businesses in Maryland's capital region. After becoming a recognized resource partner of the United States Small Business Administration in 2013, we joined a national network of over 100 women business centers. Our initial center in Rockville, Maryland, caters to entrepreneurs in Frederick County and Montgomery counties, including the cities of Frederick and Rockville. 
In 2022, through an SBA initiative supporting historically black colleges and universities, we established a second center at Bowie State University, specifically serving entrepreneurs located in Prince George's County in the city of Bowie. Our funding from the SBA requires matching funds for each center. If, requir if matching requirements are not met, federal funding is not received, a challenge that underscores our financial pressures we face to maintain support for our two centers. MWBC achieves our mission through entrepreneur training, facilitating access to diverse funding sources, and targeted free strategic business counseling. Since our launch, MWBC has guided thousands of entrepreneurs and small businesses significantly, significantly excuse me, contributing to Maryland's regional economic growth. In the city of Bowie alone, since FY17, we have served almost 1,000 unique clients through um, counseling and training, helped launch nearly 20 businesses, created and are retained over 360 jobs, and facilitated almost 500,000 in capital infusion. Outside of counseling and training, the Maryland Women's Business Center Shop Local program is a vital initiative of MWBC dedicated to nurturing startup and early stage entrepreneurs on the realms of retail and small scale manufacturing. Conceptualized as a robust platform for breaking down the barriers that typically hinder entry into a business, this program has proven instrumental in the economic empowerment of nearly 40 entrepreneurs since its 2019 inception and facilitating over $400,000 in sales. This noteworthy achievement not only highlights the program's effectiveness but also its pivotal role in ensuring that 87% of its graduates successfully establish their own storefronts, whether online or a brick and mortar storefront. Thank you. <clears throat> the expansion of the shop local from its original single location to three with expansions in Howard County showcases the program's ever increasing value to Maryland's capital region. This growth is a testament to our critical demand for accessible resources that empower entrepreneurs, underscored by the program's success in fostering not just individual businesses, but in contributing significantly to the, com to the community's economic vitality. Shop Local extends its benefits far beyond the entrepreneur it directly supports. It plays a crucial role in stimulating the local economy. It plays a crucial role in stimulating the local economy. The success stories generated through this program are emblematic of the broader positive ripple effects across the community, highlighting the invaluable contributions of small businesses to the area's economic ecosystem. It represents more than a program. It symbolizes a community-wide commitment to fostering an environment where economic independence and prosperity are attainable, thereby enhancing the overall quality of life for everyone in the region. Initiatives like Shop Local underscore its mission to build not only successful enterprises, but also a stronger, more prosperous community. We know that our partnership makes tremendous difference in the lives of, in the lives of entrepreneurs we serve by helping them on a path to economic independence and financial self-sufficiency. Our impact extends beyond numbers, fostering a ripple effect of economic growth and prosperity within the community. Our supportive network and nurturing environment are not just buzzwords. They are the foundation upon which countless success stories are built. If I may share one of those success stories includes Vino 301, a wine concierge service. With assistance from our center, Vino 301 was, a was able to secure almost $60,000 for a van, expand for a van, excuse me, expand their wine tour operations and boosting sales and employment. Additionally, Industries by Design received, another business, received assistance in business setup and secured a micro grant for website enhancement. Currently, we're developing a marketing strategy to sustain their client base and create a pipeline of clients. As we seek your support for fiscal year 2025, we recognize that this is more than just allocating funds. It is an investment in the economic empowerment of women and the resiliency of the city. Through our continued partnership, we serve as a cornerstone in fostering cult a culture of entrepreneurship, innovation, and community engagement. Again, thank you for your time and for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Joshua Wooten. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, City Council, City Staff. My name is Joshua Wooten. I am the chair of the Multimodal Access and Public Spaces Organization, aka MAPS. We are a subgroup of the Bowie Green Team. 
Maps would like to thank the city council and city staff for continued progress to make transportation within and around Bowie more accessible and inclusive to multiple forms of travel. We also wanna thank you for continuing to prioritize the creation and maintenance of public spaces that are inviting and inclusive for all Bowie residents. The proposed funding for trail and park projects in the fiscal year 25 budget shows that the city values improving pedestrian safety and our connectivity and recreation opportunities within the city. We feel that these projects will result in Bowie being safer for pedestrians, better integrated within a regional trail network and having some of the best public spaces in the region. We would like to ask for your support for funding for the following CIP items in the proposed budget. CR-46, MAPS is very pleased to see the implementation and construction of the railroad museum improvements proposed for fiscal year 25. We feel that this project serves a vital need in Old Town by providing a shared community space for residents and visitors to come together, support local businesses, and celebrate the rail history, which is a significant part of Bowie. Also, this will provide another stop along the Bowie Heritage Trail, allowing the opportunity for visitors on this trail to stop and experience Old Bowie. PW-2, while there has been concern and ongoing discussions resulting from the initial design of the Ken Hill Drive Complete Streets concept, MAP supports the city's plan to just focus on the Ken Hill Drive, Maryland 197 intersection this fiscal year, fiscal year 25. This project alone will result in a much safer street crossing experience for pedestrians and cyclists. CR-53. MAPS appreciates funding set aside for the continued improvements to the Tanglewood Natural Area. CR-51, MAPS appreciates the city's continued focus on implementation of the tr city's trails master plan through proposed funding for the following items in fiscal year 25, including the design for the Pendle Parkway trail extension, completion of the Jericho Park trail segment, trail repairs and replacements to the hiker biker trail system on North Through Drive. In addition to these items, another item on the city's radar in fiscal year 25 is the Maryland 214 pedestrian bridge design. Once constructed, this bridge will provide the only safe pedestrian linkage between the new South Lake development and the rest of Bowie via the P section. We are aware that the city is submitting a grant request for partial funding of the Maryland 214 pedestrian bridge through the transportation alternatives program. Having a city financial commitment is important to this process and MAPS asks for your support in requesting that the city commit a funding contribution in fiscal year 25 for the design costs. We would like to thank you for your consideration on these items. Thank you. Thank you. Bob. <laughs> I am not going to butcher your name again, Bob. <laughs> Could you please state your name? <laughs> I'm Bob Rapczynski. I'm the president of the Huntington Heritage Society. Uh, just came back to, uh, to make sure that the uh, funding for the, uh, uh, the completion of the Railroad Museum project is continued into fiscal year 25. Um, Sounds like uh, everything's going on according to plan, but we just wanted to make sure. Okay. Hey, thank you very much. And uh, Isabel's right behind yes. us. So. I'm vice president of the Huntington Heritage Society. And I want to echo what Bob is saying, that the Huntington Heritage Society is, is eager to see the rest of that project completed. Um, I also represent the Huntington City Community Development Corporation, and we are also supporting this, and we'd like to see this effort continue as we approach our revitalization of Old Bowie and the, the project that we are anticipating and very excited about. So thank you for your time this evening. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. I think, Isabel, that was you, so. Yes. <laughs> Suzanne Kesa, uh, help me with the enunciation if I got it wrong. Everyone gets it wrong. Suzanne Kesa. Okay. 
And I'm just gonna follow up and say ditto to what they just said. I'm a resident of Old Town Bowie, and I'm very excited about the revitalization efforts that have been talked about that are starting, continuing. And I just also uh, urge the city council to please continue to put funding in that for the next fiscal year budget. And thank you for all of your efforts to support Old Town Bowie. Thank you. Okay. At this time, uh, are there any other questions or comments? If not, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Mayor, I'm sorry. I need to close the public hearing at this time. I will entertain a motion. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move to introduce uh, Ordinance 04-24 and Resolution R12-24. Second. <clears throat> it's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 Mayor, I'm sorry. Um, yes. A, a city attorney is recommending that we make two separate motions, for one for the ordinance and one for the resolution. Okay. In that case, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to uh, make a motion to introduce ordinance 04-24. A second. It's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I will call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 All opposed, same in favor. Hearing none, motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to introduce resolution R-12-24. Second. second. It's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to do the little thing. Anyway. Uh, opposed, same favor. Hearing none, motion carries. Mr. Mayor. Yeah. Mr. Mayor, I'd like uh, to make a motion to adjourn and begin budget work session number one. Second. It's been moved and properly second. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor, please respond with an aye. 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 Opposed, saying favor. Hearing none, motion carries. Hey, thank you everyone and appreciate you coming out tonight. Okay. We will now move into the work session. Which everyone's welcome to stay uh, for. Everybody's welcome to stay for. Yes, they are. <laughs> I just, as part of the formal yeah, meetings, yeah, we always yeah. say thank you. You know what we do for? Everybody's welcome. Yeah, they are. If we have to suffer through this, I other think people. Like other people yeah, should suffer. Yes. Yes. I'm not going down alone. Out of here. That's okay. I'm all right with that. Uh, you, Mr. Thank Mayor. you. Appreciate it. Yes. And uh, City Council, good evening. And everybody listening outside. My name's Alfred Lott. I'm City Manager. I'd like to uh, <clears throat> uh, present uh, FY 2025 budget to you. And what I'll do is to start with, uh, we're going to go through the, uh, <clears throat> the memorandum that I sent to the mayor and members of council on the 11th of April. Uh, well, we won't only read the whole thing, but I will highlight some points, and then we'll after that, we'll get into the general fund revenues with uh, <clears throat> Mr. Uh, Matthews. I am pleased to submit for your review and approval the proposed budget for fiscal year 2025. This budget reflects the guidance provided by the city's various planning documents, recommendations from the city's uh, talent staff and our professional assessment uh, with regard to what is necessary to deliver quality services to the city of Bowie. The general fund budget for FY 2025 equals $84,914,800. This represents an increase of $8,129,000 thousand two hundred dollars or ten point six percent 
over the prior fiscal year. This increase reflects uh, increased need to transfer to the equipment acquisition and the capital improvement programs. This amount includes a transfer of $2,064,300 to the equipment acquisition fund and $6,861,300 to the uh, six-year capital improvement program. The water and sewer fund has proposed a budget of $17,540,000. Uh, there is a positive story of Bowie, uh, even all the, the numbers seem large. Um, Bowie continues to be a very well econo economically and strong, as you mentioned earlier. As the largest municipality in, in Maryland's fifth congressional district, Bowie is a beacon across Southern Maryland. Bowie is a highly desirable destination for new homeowners and new commercial development. With new residential construction occurring in Melford, Mill Branch Crossing, and South Lake developments, the city will, be, will see strong population growth through the 2020s. These three large development projects are not just residential, uh, as each boasts strong commercial components which will provide new service opportunities in the city. Infill development continues with smaller residential projects on the few remaining vacant lots across the city. Additionally, with the regard to uh, business, the investments continue within Bowie and the trends of Bowie's expanding commercial bait tax base is providing a good balance to the residential community. Also, uh, for residents, the area has seen a historic low unemployment rates with Prince George's County going as low as 1.9% unemployment in November 2023. Additionally, the uh, median household income in Bowie rose to $138,797 in 2022, more than 40,000 more than Prince George's County as a whole. If you go to page uh, Roman numeral eight in your budget, I'd like to highlight <clears throat> that Bowie, uh, in the Bowie influence paragraph, that Bowie remains the fifth largest city in Maryland after the 2020 cen census. Bowie grew 6.5% compared to 12% for Prince George's County. Of the larger municipalities, only Baltimore decreased in size while the other three outpaced Bowie in population growth. Frederick with 19, Rockville 9.6, Gaithersburg with 16.2, uh, <clears throat> overtaking Rockville uh, to be the third largest city. Smaller than Bowie, Hagerstown grew 9.7%, and Annapolis 6.2. City services. If, if in any public administration course you go to the primary function of local government, it's the delivery of services. And uh, Bowie's it is, is its staff, its organization are experts at that. Providing reliable and efficient services has always been one of the hallmarks of Bowie's city government. The city council recognized this when it identified outstanding public service as one of its core values in the 2016 strategic plan. For the record and for people who are watching us on YouTube or on television, I'd like to list the services that we provide that our staff of 400 plus people deliver. Start with animal control, communications and outreach, concerts, development review, economic development, not to be confused with free enterprise and land use authority, but economic development. Emergency management and full service, uh, green buoy, leaf collection, mosquito control, parks maintenance, police, recreation, recycling collection, rental house housing and property inspections, small unit, small business assistance, snow plowing, special events, stormwater management, street lighting, installation and maintenance street, sidewalk, and trail maintenance, 
trash collection twice a week and recycling, for the record. Uh, if you, that's how we know when you really live in Bowie or not. Uh, water and sewer to 7,900 customers. Yard waste collection weekly. Youth and family services counseling. And the following recreation facilities are ball fields, a city gymnasium, an ice arena, several museums, parks, a playhouse, skate park, and last but not least, a nationally accredited senior center. The budget as presented does not reflect an increase in the city's property tax, and Mr. Matthews will touch upon that later on and when we do talk about revenues. Of significant note, if you look at page Roman numeral 11, you'll see that the city's police department operating budget to address both practical mitigation as well as enforcement. And one of these in, in particular would be uh, traffic maintenance. So it should be noted that the public works budget in street repairs and maintenance for, for road striping have been added to ma help manage traffic situations within the city using uh, markings. Also, that money can be used to uh, deal to purchase any additional uh, street maintenance uh, traffic uh, controls that we choose to use. If you'll move to page Roman numeral 12, you'll see under staffing, in, in light of the fact that, you know, we are faced with still inflation and the spiraling inflation that occurred last year has slowed down, obviously. However, the prices for any, nothing, everything has stayed where they were. They didn't recede. Um, and the fact that we are using a significant amount from our fund balance only, the only and, and new employees are absolutely essential. And uh, uh, information technology, we are looking, we are seeking a technological expansion and reliance on automation contend, to continues. And as such, the support needs for, uh, needs for employees has grown as well. Believe it or not, um, the IT department went for 13 years with, uh, without an increase that they got two years ago. We're looking for a telecom administrator that, at, that has a total salary and benefit cost of $86,287, an essential uh, need. Under the finance department, uh, we are seeking a, um, an accountant one, which is a position that will be split between the general fund and the water and sewer fund with a salary and benefits cost of $75,508. Also, within the police department, uh, we are uh, seeking to add a police officer with a total salary of 119523 If you would proceed to Roman numeral 14, there's a significant component here regarding street surf resurfacing. Uh, instead of the, the usual $2 million that we put into street maintenance, there is an additional uh, 1 million 131 for the rehabilitation of Fifth Street, which you know is its condition is lower than poor on on the rating scales, and and therefore we added we we will need to virtually rebuild at least two blocks of streets, and that's very expensive. That's the point we want to note. Also, if you drop down another block or another couple of paragraphs, you'll get to Allen Pond Park, and we intend to um, uh, replace the amphitheater, which is, 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 has become dilapidated and, and almost unmaintainable, and we want to replace it with uh, that amphitheater with a prefabricated product. Also, there are monies in, in this budget for the um, uh, Renovation of the boathouse restaurant restrooms, which would include um, <coughs> adult changing stations, which which, uh, which provides more access for handicap situations. 
One point I like to make, a point I like to make, and, and Mr. Matthews will hit on that even more on Roman numeral 16. If you look at the chart there, it shows that our fund balance, if all if the budget is approved as is, without any additions or deletions, uh, would be projected to be twenty-one million eight hundred and two thousand dollars at the end of this year, uh, after the budget is passed. And of note. Uh, Ten million six ninety four next uh, next year. Those are significant numbers that you all may be concerned about. If we were proceed to uh, Roman numerals eighteen, I'd like to wrap up my in, uh, introducing uh, introduction of this letter and encourage you all to study it for those who have not already done so. The FY twenty twenty five budget reflects our commitment to maintaining and, and improving municipal services for the benefit of our residents. That is our prime directive, as was stated in a Star Trek film once, the prime directive of our staff is to deliver services. We have worked hard to ensure that this budget is fiscally responsible while it meets the needs of the community. I would like to thank Mr. Matthews and his staff and the directors who, who have toiled and been cross-examined and, and question for the last two months to get to the point where we can produce the, this budget. We are confident that this budget represents sound financial plan that will help us continue to provide great services to our residents, uh, in particular on Quarter Horse Drive. Now, um, as we move forward, we know that there are still challenges ahead, but we, may, we remain optimistic about future of our community. We are committed working together to ensure that Bowie continues to be a great place to live, work, and raise a family. And we look forward to working with the City Council to review this financial and programmatic plan and continue to serve the residents of Bowie. Uh, at this point, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to hand over to uh, Mr. Matthews to uh, present the uh, general fund revenue picture to the Council. Thank you, Mr. Lott. Again, for the record, H. Byron Matthews, Finance Director. Uh, if you would join me on page uh, 32, we'll take a, uh, a walk through the revenue components for the upcoming budget cycle. Top of the page are real and personal property tax revenues. We're indicating that our property tax, our real property tax revenues will be $34,800,000 for this upcoming fiscal year. We also list revenues from the special taxing districts. Those are districts where commercial properties pay in for managing the stormwater management of those facilities. In addition to that, we have um, personal property tax, both incorporated and unincorporated, as well as the railroads. So our real property and personal property tax revenue will be $37,500,000 for the FY25 budget. The next section talks about the assessed value. The assessed value is going to be at $8,696,725,000 for the proposed year. And as you can see, Council and Mayor, there's no uh, proposed tax increase uh, in the FY25 year. And we show uh, the amount of revenue that that would yield for us, uh, which is the uh, 34 million, roughly $800,000. Uh, page 33 is another drill down to show what uh, the special taxing districts will pay in addition to paying our regular property tax rate of 40 cents per hundred dollars of assessed value. This money is used specifically to handle 
the stormwater management responsibilities in the following districts from 1 to 11. On page 34, we show another breakdown of the assessed values of our personal property. The personal property tax rate is 2.5 times our real property tax rate, which brings that to a dollar per a $100 uh, assessed value. Um, we will generate this year $2,343,300 on personal property tax. Next section is our business se section, uh, which is our hotel motel section. This is money that the city receives uh, via the county, shares in the uh, monies that hotels, the four hotels in the city of Bowie Bay during the uh, fiscal year. Our next section relates to our licensing and permits. Uh, licensing uh, includes the building permits, street and storm drain permits, uh, traders and peddlers permits, variance reviews, protection, inspection, and licensing fees. We, we're seeing a slight increase of that, so that is going to be at 1.3. Uh, million for the budget year. If you will follow me on to page uh, 35, we'll talk about some other things such as our federal grant and state grants. The federal grants that are listed in the first column dealing with community development, those are monies that uh, the city receives from HUD. Uh, the lion's share of that money goes to senior housing rehabilitation program. Uh, federal grant programs are normally uh, police-related programs that uh, are funded by the federal government in order to assist the city in uh, enforcing, uh, enforcing uh, their, their law and uh, highway regulations. It also includes um, monies for um, protective apparel for the police department. Our next section for this particular budget in our state grants, uh, we will have uh, money coming from the state uh, for that same purpose too, the small amount of $1,000 uh, that, that will support our police department. The next grant that we get is for the youth services. That'll be $107,000. Um, we had a... Um, an increase from the county to support youth services. And that's on our, our next page, and I'll cover that in a second. The uh, major uh, parts of our revenue, the second highest part of our revenue, makes up about 26% is our state share revenues. And it includes our income tax, our, mis our admissions and amusement taxes, motor vehicle taxes, our police protection, and our financial corporation tax. Um, as you can see, we're expecting a uh, decrease in the potential income tax revenue based on numbers that we have received from uh, the state of Maryland. Uh, in addition, uh, we are seeing an increase in the motor vehicle tax, uh, which is also a direct number from the state of Maryland. Uh, the police protection, which is $775,800, is also a direct number from uh, the state of Maryland. So those, those funds are, are guaranteed. So within the state shared revenue, the city will be collecting uh, roughly uh, $17.1 million. State grants from other local units, um, the youth services grant, as I was referring to, that is the county grant that we are receiving for $150. It is used to offset costs related to youth services bureau. Uh, we also receive an annual rebate for the county uh, for landfill fees. That's 
$800. In addition, we do receive $115,000 from Maryland Park and Planning in order to offset operating costs at Allen Pond. On page 37, we uh, list our charges for services. I won't go down each one, but this basically represents our, our uh, parks, our gymnasium, our senior center, and our ice arena. So we're expecting that that revenue for those sources will increase slightly to $1.6 million roughly. Fines and fees, uh, the major source of funding here is our cable TV franchise fees, but as we all know, that has been uh, being reduced with the other alternatives to uh, television. Uh, so we're expecting that to uh, actually be lower than our original budget amount in FY24, but higher than our estimated uh, amount for the uh, same year. Next revenue source deals with other revenues. And these are all the other revenues that cannot be identified in any of the other sections. The major one, which the city has um, basically had a good, good opportunity in this economic times with interest rates being high, that interest income has been uh, very good for the city. However, we are proposing that we're going to see lower interest rates in the latter part of uh, FY25. Thus, we were showing one point, roughly 1.8 million in interest income. Um, the other major um, item that I like to hi highlight there is the revenue that we receive from our um, tower leases. That'll be $256,600. And claims and reimbursements that we get, uh, we, we don't really know how uh, we're going to be really affected by that. That's just based on what's happening during um, the year. Uh, but we estimate that we are going to collect at least $300,000 uh, from that revenue source. So our total um, revenue from other sources will be about uh, $2,951,100 for the budget year. On page 39, uh, we basically lay out a presentation of the appropriated fund balance used for the proposed budget, which we have listed uh, $19,640,900. Our next section is transfers from other financing sources. And this is uh, central support service charge for water and sewer. This reflects the monies that are uh, charged to uh, the general fund for work that's done for the water and sewer plant. Um, so that's a, an additional $464,400 uh, revenue that the city receives from the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, the total general fund summary of revenues, so our total revenue and other financing sources will total $64,809,500. And as we previously discussed, uh, we will be using $19,640,900 from the appropriated fund balance. Also, we will receive the transfer, as I just previously mentioned, from the Ward and Sewer Fund for $464,400. That added together will give us our total budget in the general fund which will be $84,914,800. And that's not, and that's without a tax increase. And what we are basically looking at is just the growth in our real property and in our personal property. Um, but as you know, we have not offered, we have not approved a tax rate, and I guess this will be for the 15th consecutive year. Um, 
just kudos to Bowie, and we are still following our fund balance policy. Uh, the next section um, deals with uh, support for these pages that we just covered, and it covers the city revenues, city uh, rentals and user fees. Council, this is an area in which staff goes over each year and uh, does an analysis uh, in relationship to the market what the city should be charging for these venues that we have. There's been some small changes. Um, if you would like me to provide you detail for that, um, I will give you a separate report on that. But just wanted to um, highlight this area to show that, yes, um, there are some small changes in our city rental fees and user fees. Um, not significant changes, but we have had some changes. Uh, same thing for our permits and other fees, which is located on page 46. 47 and 48. And that concludes the general fund revenues for this fiscal year, Council and Mayor. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Um, if you may, um, let me ask one quick question. Okay. As we look at this, and we look at where the uh, federal monies that we got, will we be just simply looking at those dollars when we get to that uh, TFPO, those projects? Or Because I didn't see where the federal dollars were listed, for example. Go ahead, Byron. Yes, Mayor, those federal dollars are covered in another fund, and that's in another budget work session. Uh, most okay. of those funds are in the sure. water and sewer fund. And gotcha. we'll be discussing that later. All right. Go ahead, uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A uh, couple of quick questions. On page 34, uh, hotel motel tax, uh, this is an allocation of the county's uh, tax. Is, uh, do we have authority to do our... Uh, Go ahead. Uh, do we have authority uh, to impose our own uh, tax on hotel and motel? No, sir. Uh, it's, it's a county operation, and they just share part of that with the municipality. Un understood. But are, do we have the authority to impose our own in addition to or in lieu of the county? Councilman, I'm not sure we have the authority to do that. We normally have no access to the information in order to charge that fee, uh, similar to our uh, real property tax. Um, that assessment information is provided by the state. The city doesn't charge that. The county handles all of the uh, real property tax bills. Those bills that we do have control of, control of are the uh, personal property tax bills, which we do our own independent billing uh, directly out of the finance department. So, so I understand we may not have uh, visibility, there may not be transparency in the, um, uh, in the numbers about this particular, but uh, and unfortunately, I guess our uh, legal counsel has left uh, but perhaps we can follow up to find out if indeed we do have uh, the authority uh, to, uh, uh, to impose our own uh, version of a um, uh, hotel room tax, uh, notwithstanding the fact that there already exists. I mean, uh, I travel quite a bit for work and uh, oftentimes for uh, visiting family and friends, and I note that there are an abundance of local municipalities imposing uh, taxes on the hotels um, in their jurisdictions, in addition to whatever state uh, taxes might exist as well. So right. if, we could ch if we could check into that, that would be we'll awesome. We'll check to see if we have the authority to do that. You better Excellent. get back to you. Thank you. Um, the, next, um, uh, the next issue or next question, um, 
on page 36, income tax. There's uh, three different ways of calculating uh, the income tax. It's the greater of A, B, or C. Uh, do we know which formula uh, we are actually uh, benefiting from uh, for, uh, for, our, uh, uh, for our current rates? Councilman, as that as is listed there, uh, there are a um, there, the methodology in order to develop those numbers are strictly from the state, and we've had them laid out here, and they've been basically consistent throughout my tenure uh, with the city. Um, so we get a piece of each one of these um, categories that are listed here. Uh, one of the things that uh, happens with the income tax is basically uh, a reserve fund, which we do have at least um, another $6 million that is reserved, meaning that we don't necessarily get it in the year in which it's taxed. We get it in subsequent years, mm -hmm. um, and we receive a portion of that uh, as people file their taxes, as the taxes are actually collected and administered. Okay. So, but in, in this particular explanation, it says the state comptroller distributes an amount that equals the greater of either A, 8.5% of state income tax, or B, 17% of county, or 03 um, of taxable income. I'm curious as to which one we're uh, our assessment comes through from. Councilman, I, I would have to follow up on that. Uh, we don't get a sheet uh, that indicates what those numbers are being generated from. Fair those enough. kind of numbers are dictated to us. All right, fair enough. Thank you. I'll look forward to that. Um, and to your point that you uh, volunteered earlier, I uh, very much appreciate the, the list for uh, changes, uh, uh, comparison of this year's versus last year's uh, uh, fees. And I assume that'll be kind of across the board on, on all of these things. Thank you kindly. I think that's everything I have. i go back and review my notes. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, I, I have one basic question. Member Rogers, please. Thank you. I'll put my hand down. Uh, so, so um, last year there was a lot of discussion about a tax increase. What I need to understand better is what happened um, so that we are staying at the um, point four zero percent or forty cents on a hundred dollars tax rate. So what happened so that we did not have to raise taxes? Because last session, I think there was a vote that was delayed on it. So what's different this year? Well, uh, good question. Uh, just for the record, this is my eighth budget here in Bowie. And like, unlike dog years, it's not seven years. It's like six. So I got, <laughs> I'm at the 64-year mark here. Now, uh, in 20, and when the budgets that are used here in Bowie in my four cities that I've been in, it's the, it's the best document for a lay person and serve your finance person. And we, in 2017, we, we, did, we were working on the 18 budget. There was a projection that uh, Mr. Matthews and his team had made in conjunction with the council when, when we should increase taxes to maintain a, a really nice fund balance, which people argue whether it's essential or not. I uh, will say that when it comes to getting bond ratings, it matters. It's not all that matters, but it does matter. Uh, so in 2018, as projected and signed off by the previous council, we put a three cents increase then. And, uh, and at the, the last work session, the, the council requested that we cut that out cut some uh, uh, issues, cut and got and, and lose the $3 million increase, you know, which is about what a penny would get. 
So that was session one. Last year, during the guidance in January, the majority, I'll say that to be clear because all people didn't agree, but the majority of the council said, yeah, let's, let's work with the tax increase. But once again, as, as we move forward, uh, there was a change of heart and we, the council elected to leave that tax increase out. And so and we use, plan to use like $10, $12 million of the budget last year from the fund balance. So again, in January, the guidance was no taxes by the majority of the council, and that's why we're here with this. And we're using the, as some members of the council say, prepaid taxes to balance the budget, but that's what, that's what happened with that. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. City Manager. So one other question based on the financial expertise that's sitting on that side of the room with you. Um, what do you think? How long do you think we can kick this bucket down the road? Mm -hmm. You look at the, uh, is that moment? Yeah. on page 12, there is a okay. chart that shows what, what the fund balances should be if we continue down this road without a um, uh, tax increase. So next year we would be down to approximately $10 million in the fund balance, assuming that all, that all the spending that we project happens. Now, one of my claims to professional fame is that we generally underspend the budget. Of course, you can't depend on that, but I, I suspect it's going to happen uh, for a few million dollars. Um, and, and then you'll see that in the next fiscal year, projected to be uh, non-existent. And it will be, then be, of course, whether, whether or not a 25% a uh, standard is maintained is up to the city council, because that's a council rule, just for the record. Um, but have you, did you find the chart, ma'am? Yeah, I have it. And, and, and also that 25%, I believe, is a generally accepted accounting principle. So, um, uh, yeah, I see it. This, this shows that at least around fiscal year 2027 um, is when yeah, decisions have to be made. Well, yes. Uh, uh, the, uh, well, before that, yeah. Well, I mean, during that, during that process, what you know, what will happen uh, and what tolerance that the council will have for a fund balance. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, council member. Uh, council member Brady. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Um, first off, uh, just to touch on a, the item, the first item you asked about regarding the, <coughs> the, abuse, or the uh, hotel tax. I believe that's state law, and I think it's, they've made an attempt to change it, and it's been, um, garnered some resistance. And I would suggest maybe that is a worthwhile LIR mm -hmm. for the MML for next session. So uh, keep that in mind and bring it back. Um, I'll, I'll continue on with what uh, uh, Councilman Rogers was was talking about last, and that is the fund balance. That is a little concerning. Because all the years I was on, those many years, it was not unusual to see us in a projection where we'd reach the 25% limit in the out years, three years, four years, five years. And the way staff makes the assumptions on revenue and on expenditures, it was never really anything to worry about because every year it was always three to five, three to five. The next year is three to five still. <clears throat> Whereas this one, this budget is at our limit, our self-imposed limit. And in two years, according to this, if things stay as they are, we're, we've expended all of our fund. So that is disconcerting, and I think we need to aggressively attack that. Um, I have a question on um, the amusement tax. Do we get anything from the Bay Sox? because it says athletic activities. Do we get any revenue coming from the Bay Sox? Now that it is, now that it is in the city, correct? No, um, what happened was with the Bay Sox, and this goes back several years ago, um, the Bay Sox was actually paying their 
uh, amusement tax to the city, but they were not in the incorporated area of the city. We found that out quite some time ago. Um, so all of that money that the city received from the uh, Bay Sox, we had to refund that money. Oh, I remember that. Yes. yes. So um, we are still in the process of doing that. I think we have one or two years left on the, the agreement that we signed. Um, and once that takes place, then the city will receive that money. Because I, I, as I recall, again, I was on the council at the time when Bay Sox first opened, the first year their taxes were sent, the revenue was sent to us. And we had like a $640,000 check from the state that was not explained. So we factored it into the budget. And then the next year, the state came to us and said, oh, but we, uh, we made a mistake. We thought Bowie Bay Sox was in Bowie, and it's not, so we want the money back. So that's back many, many years. So I didn't realize there's still a ripple effect on what was going on with that. It happened more than just the one year, uh, Councilman. Oh, so, really? Yes. Okay. So it, uh, uh, and that will be a, a nice little source, a pot of money coming in once, once we go over this issue, correct? Yes. Okay, so that's something that's on the horizon, at least for revenue coming in. Um, and uh, my last question deals with on the setting of the of the fees, especially the sports, the athletic fees. I understood you to say you you do basically market surveys and see what others of comparable um, services are charging for theirs. That's correct. The department's in charge of those amenities. Uh, prepare that type of analysis each year and make that proposal to the uh, city manager to determine whether or not we should increase okay. those fees. Okay, uh, I'm glad to hear that. Uh, um, I've always been concerned if you look at the distribution, the ice arena users seem to be paying through the nose for what we get, provide them, whereas some of the other ones seem to be getting off scot-free. And it always seemed to be um, disconcerting with that kind of a comparison, but if you're comparing, you know, what, what ball field and gymnasium and things of like are provided by other surrounding municipalities, then it's understandable. So then, thank you for that. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Brady. And uh, Council Member Ndebumadu? Thank you so much, um, Mayor Pro Tem Wolfley. Uh, just a quick question. Um, I'm sorry, my camera's not even on. <laughs> Sorry, my computer's crashing every here and there. Um, just a quick question, and I don't know if now is the most appropriate time to to answer this or focus on this. So I'm going to ask you, Mayor Pro Tem Wolfley, this is a question for you, probably not staff. But essentially, when will be the right time to discuss essentially like our revenue models and our postures? Because I, I just find it interesting that it, it and I'm not saying you're passing blame on anyone, but it seems like we do have pretty much the same conversation every year, at least going on the five years that I've been on this council. And so I think there's a clear need to have to talk about revenue models and how we diversify and if we're going to continue to focus on or prioritize property taxes so that we don't have to keep having the same conversation every year. So at what point would be the most appropriate time to have that conversation? Uh, my first my first uh, thought on that would be that we should uh, probably schedule something for a regular council meeting uh, as, a, uh, as a policy discussion. I'm not sure if we want to do it uh, during a budget session as we're going through each section, or if we could do it, um, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think, our next, when's, when's our next full session? First Monday in May. First Monday in May. From a staff standpoint, is it better to work it through that environment or is it a preferred for uh, a, uh, a budget session such as well, a present? Well, I mean, if, if asking my professional opinion, I think the best thing to do is, is what you recommended after we complete FY 2025 and get this locked down because it's too late to change any models right now because uh, we are, however, in June or at the last uh, last work session, well, last work session, the budget needs to be approved. But in June, uh, we can sit down and you all can talk to us about what you would like, and then we go back and see if it's either feasible or legal to, to change it. 
Currently, in the United States, most cities are supported by property taxes, unless you live in Alabama or Florida, where they have these exorbitant sales taxes. Uh, you know, you pay 10 cents on a dollar mm. uh, for everything you buy in Montgomery. But it's the best time to do that would be June, so that we can react. If you say, I'll take, we do our research, come back to you. And if there are four people who want to change the model, or, or even, even if it's possible to change the model within the confines of state law, um, then we could talk about it in the summer and then be ready for the next budget so we can incorporate whatever changes the council. Yeah. Uh, so comments. if, if um, so for example, we just had a, a, a quick dialogue on just one component. Well, for example, it was the uh, hotel tax, the potential for uh, incorporating that. Um, obviously, if we wanted to include it for next uh, fiscal year, uh, we would need to act on it in, in short order. Uh, but yet, we're sitting here in a budget session without the appropriate council uh, or the research to kind of have right. a, a full dialogue on it. Right. Um, let's see, um, Councilman and Debumadu, uh, do you think this is something maybe we ought to start conversation with in our uh, in our strategic planning session, and then move forward with it in the uh, uh, in our regular uh, full council meetings? I'm definitely open to having the discussion in a in a full council meeting. I, I think I would be more aligned with the the latter approach of having this discussion in a council meeting so that residents get the opportunity to participate in the conversation and have their input heard. So I would lean more towards that option. But to drive clarity here, what I'm not suggesting is anything illegal, anything non-feasible, or anything that is outside of the confines of what a city government is able and appropriate to do. What I am suggesting is looking at other options that other cities and municipalities potentially and possibly adopt across the United States and see if there's a better model out there so we don't have to have the conversation on raising property taxes every single year. So that is my objective here. That's further context behind my remarks and comments. I will work with the mayor to see when it might be most appropriate to schedule that on a council agenda so that we can have the discussion. Thank you so much, Mayor Pro Tem. Absolutely. And the mayor has returned as well, so I'll turn the meeting back over to him. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And where are we at this point, uh, Mr. Matthews? Uh, oh, city manager, one of you. <laughs> I just wanted to inform the councilwoman, if she would look on page nine of the fiscal policies for the uh, city of Bowie, you will find what the revenue components are. We are a municipality that has constraints and the lion's share of our money comes from property taxes. And how you increase the revenue to the city in a significant way is to raise taxes in order to keep up with the operating expenses that we have. Uh, the city has, has participated in a policy that is considered pay as you go. And that means that we do not do a lot of high-end financing for our operations. We save, we save, we invest, and then we spend. And part of that is spending down the fund balance without raising the property taxes. Now, part of our hurdle is, is that we've had some major expenses over the last uh, 10 to 15 years, mostly the police department, in which council was able to move forward without raising taxes as they originally planned to pay for the police department. Um, back in 2005, uh, the six contract officers that we had um, only uh, cost the city $100,000. Now we have a full operating police force that is $13 million or more. And, you've, and we've done that without raising taxes. Mr. Mayor, may I please make a brief comment? Go ahead, Councilwoman. 
Um, Mr. Mayor, just to drive clarity here, um, Mr. Matthews, thank you so much for your elaborate um, overview. I'm, I'm very well aware. I have read through the budget, so thank you so much for recapping, but definitely can assure you that I've read the budget. I'm very well aware about our recent expenditures, been on the council going on five years now, so pretty much have that context. I think respectfully, I'm going to go ahead and disagree in the moment at the moment. Um, there have been significant conversations and significant comments made from members of council on how we look at diversifying our tax base on commercial taxes and the commercial tax income. So I understand the model on property taxes. I understand the model as pay as you go, which is why I asked the mayor pro tem and the mayor when would it be the appropriate time to have this, this full holistic conversation is what I don't want to happen is for us to have a very subjective conversation that is that does not paint the overall outlook and is not predicated on the concerns of the residents and them having the opportunity to amplify the way that they feel and their concerns are around increasing property taxes. Mm -hmm. So I know that that's not the proper time to have this conversation in this outlet. So I don't want to make this a back and forth with subjective responses. I, I'll just work with the mayor to schedule another time to have a more holistic conversation so that we can touch on all of the touch points and address residents' concerns and make sure that they are well informed on our models and some of the things that we're thinking and any other opportunities that might be out there for us as a municipality okay. across the United States. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Councilwoman. I would like to make just one uh, clarification, uh, Mr. Matthews, when you were stating that, that uh, I know you meant to say that by us raising property taxes and not property values. So I, I think you said value instead of taxes, but I just want to make sure everybody's clear on that. So um, having said that, a, a couple of questions. Uh, I guess we're we're still on the general fund revenues. Is that where we are? Well, he are we he, had, he had completed his his pitch, Mr. Mayor, and we're in the Q and A for him. Okay, where are we at now on the capital projects? No, we haven't started yet. We haven't started. We, 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 we've got uh, that ahead of us. That's what we're next. So we're now doing capital projects, correct? We, yes, when we finish the Q and A, we're, we're I'm ready to go. Okay, and I'll, I think you probably had a good discussion, and I won't say much on the capital improvement program, except uh, something the Mayor Pro Tem had said before, and that is making sure we look forward, and, and I think city uh, manager, you may recall, and I think you may have already done it, is looking at some of the things we put into uh, our capital improvements and our capital improvements program and the money we spend that for some of the storm water and some of those other things that we look at best practices that may not need for us to be accumulating money over the next 60 years. I'm just using, throwing out a number. So I hope we do take what, a look at what that. What project so. are you referring to, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. Are you referring to- I said storm water. I'm talking about the ponds. You mean the dredging of the ponds? Yeah. Yeah, that that does, but the 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 funds are, are a dip, they don't that doesn't come from the fund balance. That that does. Not, I didn't hear you. It does not. The money for dredging the ponds that we're going to talk about later, that's not coming from the fund balance. There's a special tax district associated with that. Right, and I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about there was still money where we were putting long term for 60 years from now. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, and and that is the one that we've. We're still doing that, and that's the special tax. A special tax that we're levying on the people with the ponds and the whole thing, correct? Yeah, the commercial entities in the city. And we don't have any that we, as a city, manage, do we? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We do maintain some stormwater facilities that are not related to those commercial developments. Right, and I'm not talking. Commercial, yeah, so we do. But we have a, what we, have we a, do. We have a team that does that um, year round, a stormwater management division. So it's nothing that we add to the long term. It's just no, no. It. This is standard. It's, it's it is included in the yearly budget. It is standard operating okay. procedure. Okay. Thank you, uh, Byron. Why don't you go ahead? Uh, Mr. Mayor, it's, uh, we're, Mr. 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 Uh, okay. Yeah. Sure. What did you say, um, Council and, and Mayor? If you will follow me to uh, page one seventy three. 
we're talking about the capital projects fund capital project fund works in conjunction but is not the same as a capital improvement CIP the CIP is a six-year plan which the council adopt in, for, in a form of a resolution to authorize the improvements or the acquisition of projects the current budget year portion of that plan must be funded by the appropriated and appropriated in the annual budget ordinance. Uh, page 173 is a summary of the revenues um, needed to fund the uh, capital projects uh, for the upcoming year. We kind of laid out uh, where the money sources are coming from to fund the uh, $46,491,400 in projects for FY25. If you turn to page 174, this is more of a detail of those funding sources as they relate to each project. And you can see that from the fund balance of the Capital Projects Fund, we're using $7.2 million to fund uh, projects. In addition to the general fund transfer, which is roughly $6.9 million, which we transfer from the general fund to the capital project fund in order to uh, fund those amenities, those improvements that we do in the um, capital projects area. Um, our intergovernmental funds are the um, for land acquisition and open space, uh, that is money that the city has to uh, purchase um, open space opportunities uh, throughout the city. Again, our next section is the other revenue sources, which is basically our um, pervasive maintenance in this section. Uh, as you know, we used that money to reserve uh, for future maintenance to our facilities. The last portion in the, the largest portion of the revenue source is the issuance of uh, general obligation bonds, uh, 30 million point three, in order to fund the uh, proposed construction of the new ice arena. So the total fund needed to fund all of our projects within the uh, budget year is uh, 4.5 uh, million, 46, excuse me, 46 million five hundred thousand dollars. On page uh, 176, we show the appropriations in another way so that you can see how much we're spending on each project uh, within this budget cycle. We also show you how much we spent in the last fiscal year and what we expect to spend in the current year on the projects uh, mentioned here. On page 177 is an itemized list, again, of all of the projects that we are proposing this year, along with uh, some text of uh, what it is we're actually doing. Um, the city manager will be covering those projects in detail, so I won't read down this list. I will uh, conclude my, my opening remarks and let uh, the city manager uh, present the capital improvement program to you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, are we ready to go into the projects themselves? That, that seems like appropriate at this time. No, no issues, no questions. Uh, yeah, because I, I can raise the questions I have when we get to the individual. Sure. Well, okay then. So the first uh, project will be land acquisition on page 208. This is funding that's been identified by acquisition of open space areas in and around the city. The amount available in fiscal year 25 provides provided by prior year transfer, the general fund, $76,400. The current year appropriation 
for capital funds is $22,100 and the state program open space of $1,449,600. Uh, currently, we have not identified any, any, any acquisition action so far, but we will be prepared to use this money if it meets the um, open space criteria to acquire those uh, funds. Any question about that? If there aren't any, then I'll go to page 210. A senior center has no, it is not an active plan, uh, project for this year. Um, moving on to um, page 212, which is the Ken Hill Center. It is an active project with $80,000 um, worth of work to be done. This facility is the home of the city of Bowie's Youth and Family Services, the Bowie Cable TV Studio. And uh, this page provides various facility and systems equipment upgrades uh, required to maintain the center. Um, if you look at page 213, you'll see for FY 2025, we plan to spend $80,000 to replace the um, uh, the multi-purpose room flooring um, and uh, paint the multi-purpose room itself. And we projected $80,000 from that. And the fund is get, the money is scheduled to come from the general fund. Any questions about this project? I, I have a question. Proceed. Uh, go ahead, Councilwoman. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So. Um, City Manager, do you believe that the Kent Hill Center is being fully utilized? Are you getting the value from the, you know, investments that you put into this facility? Well, to, in a short answer, yes. The the the, the Kent Hill Center is used by residents, uh, and and the, the multi-purpose for for meetings, and it's a major place where we uh, we have uh, stakeholders uh, meetings or citizen interest meetings have been there, uh, and several in council have been at Ken Hill. Uh, and um, we also have at least five tenants in, in Ken Hill presently. Um, and, and, and so, yeah, it's getting the use, we believe, and uh, most of the users are residents of Bowie and uh, who don't want to come to City Hall to do something. Uh, the other question is around security in that facility. Um, do you have the uh, cameras or whatever is necessary in order to um, uh, for the, the the folks that are using the facility to feel safe? I know that during events there's someone that's sitting at that front desk, but what about at other times? Well, uh, to begin with, yes, we do have cameras in the vicinity of that area. Also, we have a Part of our police operation is conducted at Kent Hill, and um, and so we are considering even more because if later on in the uh, there's a uh, there's a component in emergency management for for um, facility security, but uh, we have not had an incident yet. But we do staff it with Rangers, and uh, that is a police. Uh, alternate station over there. You might see the police cars over there on occasion. And according to uh, the director, there are cameras in place. Thank you. Councilmember Brady, go ahead. Thank you. Real, real quickly, the uh, the entry here talks about replacing the flooring to multi-use court flooring. Are we looking to return that to more of a athletic usage rather than a meeting room? Councilman Brady, um, it, it's intended to allow for multi-use activities, which would include um, athletic, uh, low-level dance, cheer, okay. uh, pickleball, stuff that currently can't uh, always get accommodated at the gymnasium during basketball season. Okay. All the courts are reserved for basketball, uh, so it gives us some flexibility with the space. So uh, but it, it also can be utilized for, for meeting space. Okay. So is that going to be a... 
hard, like a hardwood flooring? It's, it's a, or, uh, it's a synthetic it material. It's a, has, it has cushion to it. You could do yoga on it. You can, um, you know, you can put chairs on it. It's, it's intended for this kind of an environment, uh, at school settings. School okay. But, settings. but it's more of a rubberized type surface. And That's correct. And the reason I ask is if you put a hard surface down, you're going to increase the noise level, which may defeat the purpose of using it as a multi-purpose. Yeah, surface. no, this is, uh, definitely has some, uh, sound, uh, deafening, you know, uh, qualities. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you, man. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Keep going. We'll move to uh, page 214, Emergency Operations Center. There are no plans for this year as an inactive. There are currently a construction and a significant upgrade of our EOC that's currently ongoing in the uh, 2024 budget. On page 216, the Harmel House, there is no activity, uh, CIP activity there. We move to page 218, you'll see uh, the City Hall, and everybody knows where that is. And uh, so I won't read that description. However, if you look at uh, uh, on page 219, the top chart there, there's an, uh, the, the, uh, the engineering and the design component for the rooftop unit, which as expected to cost $20,000. And the replacement of phase, uh, phase, one, phase one of eight uh, with regard to flooring replacement is also scheduled to be conducted in City Hall, which is estimated to cost us $100,000, of which it's coming from the fund balance. Any questions about the City Hall RT? Uh, 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 rooftop Unit awesome. 1 has been a very problem roof, uh, unit ever since I've been last year, eight years I've been here. And uh, flooring is, uh, what, uh, 12 years old now, so. Councilman Brady. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, kind of related on this entry, um, one is, <clears throat> I would like for us to get away from putting up temporary signs throughout the building, entranceways, what have you, that are there for 10, 15, 20 years. If we need a sign at a door, I think it ought to be a, a permanent one rather than a piece of paper taped up or laminated piece of paper. Just, I think, it, and it's throughout the city where we do things, let's don't be temporary, and I think we ought to talk about state and county doing the same thing, uh, Comcast, Verizon, and stuff like that, because I think it just makes the city look kind of trashy. Specifically, <clears throat> when I left the PSC meeting the other night, I walked out and I happened to notice there's a spotlight attached to some of the, um, uh, just over the windows, pointing at the buoy, city police, label on the side of the building. The spotlight wasn't on, but it had an extension cord that ran over to an outlet. And this goes to the temporary, if you will. I don't think it's inappropriate to highlight Bowie City Police on the side of the building. I think it'd be great. One, we ought to do it in a permanent way that is correct electrically and, and by code. And two, the problem that I saw also was the spotlight was pointed up and we have the issue with light pollution. So it ought to be properly set. So those kind of things that as we run across them, and they're not all big ticket items, some of them are just small ticket items, but we need to get away from these temporary installations that end up being there forever. Thank you, Mayor. Any other questions? Okay, city manager. Thank you, sir. The next um, page. Sorry, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was trying to, but press mute and it just wasn't working. I'm so sorry. Mr. Mayor, may I just ask one question? Yes, go right ahead, Councilwoman. Thank you so much. Um, just a quick question on, on uh, I know there was a mention about Ken Hill, just a quick question. Um, with the way that Ken Hill is currently being utilized today, are there any plans um, in the foreseeable future to change the utilization structure or do we just plan on moving forward with the same way it's being utilized today? Well, that the use of Ken Hill would be a policy decision, in my opinion. And we, we, we've got our marching orders. We are operating the Ken Hill Center the way previous councils wanted us to. If somebody wants to change that policy, go right ahead. We'll, we'll salute the flag and move on. Third. Yeah, you, 
If I may, there is a uh, limitation on the use of the Ken Hill uh, Center. There's a requirement that it be uh, at a minimum 50% use uh, for municipal uses. Uh, so we don't have complete freedom in regards to how it's used. Um, thank you so much. Just a really quick follow-up question. Um, Assistant City Manager Mears, thank you so much for that context. I remember a couple, probably like a year ago or up to a year ago, I had asked to see if we had the lease because I know that essentially Ken Hill was provided to us. If I remember correctly, I could be inaccurate here, but from my memory, Ken Hill was provided to us by Prince George's County and essentially our responsibility was capital improvements and, and we weren't sure essentially what that what the dictations of that lease was because at that time no one had it when I had requested it. So have we found it and essentially the lease now, it, what what the lease is, is that it states that 50% of it has to be used for like municipal activities from the perspective of city business or do you mean like community usage? This is Nick Spurgeon again. Um, it's my understanding that Ken Hill Center, you, know, you are correct, uh, Councilwoman, um, that we did get that from Prince George's County. Um, however, it's under a deed, not a lease. Um, and that's something that we can certainly provide. Okay, and then just a follow-up question. So is the usage breakdown that it's used for community like services, like community outreach, or like city services, like municipal operations? It's my understanding 50% for city services, so such as youth family services, community meeting space that's operated under our recreation um, program. Um, so you know, we're, we're meeting that now. We have a studio that's there as well. Um, and, and to clarify before, when I said Prince George's County, it's Prince George's County school system. Okay, let me just ask a quick follow-up question. This is super, super helpful context. Um, so like, let's say for example, cause I, re I remember many, many moons ago when I had spoke to Sally Hines when she was previously here, her vision that she had articulated to me for Ken Hill was that, you know, a good portion of it would be rented out by a nonprofit and the nonprofit would pay to be able to be leased at Ken Hill that provided services to the community. And that's essentially how Ken Hill would pay for itself and potentially some of its capital improvement projects. Is that something today, given how it's utilized? And I know it's a policy decision for council to be able to dictate the use, but is that something that's still, I don't know, it's somewhere in the vision plan? I'm just trying to get an updated vision of like how that space is, is being seen at this moment by staff. So that that is not our vision at this point. We have too many um, internal uses to make that a a, a realistic option um, you, you know I don't know where we'd put all these people all the all the you know we have the studio youth family services we have meeting space we have a, a room that we're converting over to court space for the co additional co uh, community usage uh, we have five plus tenants that are in in, in the building uh, we have the buoy food pantry um, so again you know th I think that's a lot of a lot of uh, exiting of activities that are that are critical to city operation. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much. If you could, if, if when you do, um, when you are able to get access to it, just forward that deed over to the council. It would just be interesting to understand the what what the agreement or what the process was with Prince George's County and and how they gave it to us. It would, it would just be helpful context. Thank you. Certainly. All right. Thank you very much, Councilman. Uh, any other questions? Uh, no? Okay. Move, moving right ahead. Did we do the city manager. All right. So, uh, gymnasium uh, is um, on page 220, uh, which I think is next. We have $88,000 set aside in, for this project. That would be the gym floor. If you look at page 221, the gym floor refinishing project that was last done in 2012. Uh, and we generally try to update the floors every seven to ten years, and and sixty five thousand dollars set aside for that, and then flooring replacement in two classrooms for another twenty three thousand dollars. That money is scheduled to come from the general fund. Uh, and uh, any other questions? Uh, real quick on that, and I think that goes back to we'll address it later as well. But when are we, uh, have we put any funds in for the courts? Uh, where have we, what year do we have where we build the courts? Courts, the courts? Uh, at the gym, you mean? 
Are you referring to the gym? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let me see here. 289, that's uh, the, are you talking about the golf course or, or the gymnasium? The actual, we were talking about building new courts. I'm saying, you know, what year? That's, that's later. Like, I was just asking what year was that, that we were, had that in the budget? And out years, what out year did we have that? 2028. 2028? 2028? Yes. Okay, thank you. Go ahead, city manager. Okay, so uh, are there any questions about the gymnasium project? I just have one question, Mr. Mayor. Go right ahead, Councilwoman. Sure, just trying to connect the dots. So when you have uh, pickleball tournaments there or things that require funding, do those funds that um, people pay to enter these tournaments go into the general fund and then, um, yes. uh, yeah, and that's how it's used. It, it's taken out to pay for these types of things. Well, theoretically, yes, the money goes into the general fund. Okay, okay, that's what I needed. Okay, thank you. Welcome Center on uh, 222, an inactive project. Uh, moving to 224, the genealogy library is an inactive project for this year. Moving to page 226, which is uh, energy efficient improvements. This project provides for the development and implementation of energy efficient improvements on city facilities or lands. A study was completed evaluating the feasibility of installing renewable energy technologies on city facilities. A priority list of future projects was established. This is, will be the first ongoing project that satisfied goal six of strategy number one of the city's energy efficiency conservation plan. If you look on page 227, you'll see that for fiscal year 25, we intend to retrofit the lighting at the gymnasium at a cost of $50,000. Uh, this project, we did that already? Uh, we just signed the contract. Yeah. The, um, as you'll see in the, in the write-up, there's also $10,000 set aside for retrofit lighting in, in the um, uh, ice arena, current ice arena, uh, in, for 2024. And that contract has just been uh, let. And so that, um, and retrofitting City Hall uh, lights, that's also in progress for this fiscal year. Any questions regarding energy efficiency improvements? And oh, by the way, that money comes for that comes from the fund balance. One moment, uh, Councilman uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, quick question on the lighting at the ice arena. If we're uh, dropping 10 grand for something that uh, we're gonna be uh, tossing overboard in about four years, or no, less than that, right? We're gonna, we should be two years uh, that we should be into the new location. What's the uh, break even on that? And uh, about five months. No I'm kidding, well, yeah. there you go. Yeah, and, and uh, this budget was printed um, and, and prepared before we signed the contract. The contract's about $6,000. Uh -huh. um, and we're getting around a 50 some thousand dollar um, subsidy um, on, on the other end. To help us, so we're this. This will be uh, uh, beneficial for the city. Outstanding, thank you kindly. You are welcome. Thank you, um, Councilman Brady. Yeah, just a, a quick request. In the description of this item, it just says a priority list of future projects is established. This will be an ongoing project <coughs> project that satisfies Goal Six, Strategy One of the city's energy efficiency and conservation strategy. For those of us on the council that weren't here when that was done, could we either get a copy of that or a link to that document so we can get up to speed on that? I'd appreciate it. We'll deliver that to you. Should they? Thank you. All righty. Um, are there any other questions? Mm, I think uh, somebody's got the hand up there. Uh, yeah, Councilman, uh, Councilwoman, and the Bamadu. I think her hand was just left up. Okay. So can we proceed? Let's uh, proceed. All right. Uh, page 230. Uh, the title of this project is ADA Assessment Project. Assessment Project. 
The city aims to enhance accessibility uh, and utilization of public facilities and services. The primary objective is to ensure strict adherence to um, Americans with Disabilities Act and uh, to develop and implement an ADA transition plan. This plan will, will focus on addressing an, an any identified deficiencies to create inclusive and accommodating environment for residents, businesses, and visitors with disabilities. There is a $75,000 uh, component to this budget. Uh, if you look at me, city manager, what page are you on at this point? You skipped 228, the facility security? Oh, sorry about that. I thought we, yeah. my bad. Yeah. I, I, I'll, I'll come back to it since I'm yeah. down rabbit hole. Yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. That, <laughs> okay, we're on 230, talking about ADA access, and we're going to go back and, okay. and pick up the one that I, I overlooked. We will give you that last. That's all right. Well, you know, I, I'll, I'll blame it on uh, age or something. Okay, so I, I read the description for ADA assessment project. You look at uh, fiscal year 2025, there are improvements, uh, including the, uh, the Allen Pond City Park. There will be some renovations to the uh, restroom uh, near the boathouse, and this will include a changing table for adults, uh, which does not exist in, 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 a, in an effort to make the, the facilities more accommodating to people with disabilities. Any questions regarding that particular project? That's great. Back to page 228, please. Uh, facility security. Uh, we here in the city are committed to the safety and security of our red citizens, uh, staff working in our city-owned facilities. These steps are being taken to ensure that safety. There's $350,000, most of which came from fr cable franchise fees um, that went into the general fund, of course. Uh, if you look at uh, FY 2025, we want a, a part of a phased plan, physical security improvements and hardware. Uh, closed circuit TV, and we're looking at a visit. We're looking at developing a visitor management system, access control systems, alarms, and uh, for all city uh, facilities, FY 2025 20, phase, uh, parks and grounds, <laughs> playhouse, and emergency uh, PA system for the city. These are all the things that we are planning to utilize those funds for. Any questions regarding the facility security? project. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick question. Can you speak, I, I know we uh, had some issues, some security issues, uh, particularly around buses and I think uh, uh, catalytic converters and maybe some other uh, issues there uh, prior to putting the fencing up, but I now believe that's all, I believe that facility is secured. Have we had, have we seen a commensurate reduction in, in losses? Um, that fence has been in place for about six months or so. We have not had an incident um, at that location since the fence has been uh, installed. It's, it's pretty stout. It's very similar to uh, what the police lot has uh, out back here at City Hall. Uh, there's also CCTV and upgraded lighting in that compound. Excellent. Thank Actually, uh, since that theft of the, the catalytic converters, uh, uh, we haven't had any problems with our vehicles because we were parking them in public works until we got the fence constructed. Because, you know, yes. I, I guess you can recycle uh, all those converters. God, you help the people who do things like that. But anyway, we, we've secured our buses. Very good, thank you. And the, the CCTV is available for um, issues or concerns, not just regarding, uh, uh, you know, the, the um, the lot is the coverage beyond that as well so there is uh cctv or cameras um closed caption cameras um they're all cloud-based the system we use is all cloud-based mm -hmm. um, it covers this the uh, senior center property um as well as the the main lot so uh, there are our cameras that are throughout that that um, complex excellent thank you very You're much welcome. greatly appreciate it yeah thanks thank, thank you Mayor. any other questions uh, I do, Mr. Mayor. One moment, uh, Councilwoman uh, Michael Estelle. Uh, I can, I'll wait. One second. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, 
So just so I understand correctly, with these um, uh, improvements at Parks and Ground, Bowie Playhouse, um, and then the emergency pay system at City Hall, are there any, from the perspective of a resident who's walking in to use one of these facilities, will there be any changes for them uh, that, that would they would notice or that, that would change their experience in any way? Uh, Mr. Mr. Esther, there, there would not be a situation based on the camera positioning or the fact that they were there. We are, however, looking into a um, visitor management system similar to what they have at COG or other places. Uh, of course, when we develop that plan, we'll bring it back to the council and get your approval before we implement it. But we have to see what's, uh, what's acceptable. If you remember five years ago, uh, after one of the, the, sh the shootings, or one of the many shootings, uh, there was one in the city facilities in Virginia Beach and other places close by. And so we were, in the, we were at the verge of taking that step to further control entrance to the, to the building, but it was all, all washed away by COVID-19. And so that took precedent over everything else for a while. But we do not have a secure building, technically. I mean, there's, I understand there's two sides of that coin. You want to be secure, but you want to let the residents have access. I get that since I'm a, I didn't know how much my tax, taxes were. I read the bill last week. So a really high paying taxpayer. So I understand you want access to the facility. So we're going to come up with a plan and see what we can do, what can accommodate both, and then present to you all, and you can either accept it or change it or we can set it aside. But uh, we have secured the building significantly in the last seven years, though, because before I arrived, somebody could walk in the city hall and go to somebody's office back in planning or um, uh, and because there, the doors were not secure once you left the common area, right? And so we secured those doors with, uh, with the key cards and all that. What we haven't done is the entrance to the city hall and made it safer for everybody, you know? Uh, so that's where we are. It's, we're considering it. I mean, it'll be a plan that you all approve and, uh, and the residents can, can bear. Thank you. Rob. Thank you. Um, Council Member Rogers. Hi, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so I had an opportunity to look at the budget planning meeting from last year and when this topic came up and I believe it was Councilman Estev who was concerned about the access to the people's house. Um, this is a, a, you know, the city hall should be accessible to everyone. And it made me reflect back on, you know, the, the White House is the people's house, but you still have to go with the guards um, to, to get in metal detectors. So I, I guess my question uh, around security, will this result in hardening that building so that if there is uh, an, an unfortunate incident that may be happening in the vicinity, that the building is able, or the, the city buildings are able to go into lockdown. Is that, you know, a possibility where you can push a button and lock all the doors well, uh, to keep people from getting out? You know, that kind of thing. Well, there certainly will be a consideration for, for, for okay. that. Um, and, and of course, how much things cost, everything's automated and very expensive. Um, and maybe, uh, and as you can tell, it's a phase uh, situation and we're prompted by our, our police and, and, and emergency management guys. But we're, um, we're going to look at all aspects of securing the, the building because I think uh, last week or so, um, some people, some young men stole a car and abandoned it near the town center, jumped out, and the, high, the elementary school down the street of North uh, Ridge was, was locked down. So that's one of the capabilities we wanna, we're going to seek when we you go out and get somebody to help us see what we can do to make our buildings more more um, safe. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, Councilman Brady. Thank you. Uh, two quick questions relative to the security cameras. One is the, the cameras we're getting, are they high definition images or are they kind of very poor quality? Uh, the technology we're using, um, majority of the cameras are 4K. Are what? Are 4K. Okay, 4K, good. Yes. Um, 
which is which is better because you see many of the images, an ATM or a security camera, and you really can't tell anything about the person. So that's helpful. The other uh, related question deals with is the collection of data, the video and what have you, is, it, is that intended to be strictly kind of archived and we pull it up if there's an event? Or is there a need for someone or even AI intelligence to sit there and kind of assess whether something's happening on the field of view? So the, uh, the camera, the, the footage is currently being viewed. Um, we're gonna keep a limit on some of this, uh, this information. Okay, that, I don't blame you. Okay, sorry about that. Thank you, Mayor. Okay. Hey, sorry, could I just jump in? If, if, apologize, thank you, sir. To Council Member Reddy's point, if there's anything that Council wants to talk to you guys specifically about that, they can have those conversations offline. Just to be clear, okay. And this, for the public's understanding, is because we don't want to talk publicly about certain security measures, obviously, but we will be able to get answers to questions. All right, thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a quick follow-up uh, comment uh, on the facility security, uh, and I think this may be something that we ought to look into for other um, uh, other locations, specifically not ours, uh, and our ability to obligate others to pursue adequate uh, security for their respective properties. Uh, for example, um, you made mention of the issue recently where you had the uh, the car incident at um, at the shopping center. Uh, there was a, obviously a, uh, uh, an impact on the rest of the community, a lockdown for the, for the school. Um, but uh, I don't believe that we have the same level of uh, visibility in some of these other locations, and it might be beneficial uh, for us to pursue some sort of obligation or requirement through ordinance uh, uh, for that. So I've, I'll put that out for, for staff to consider when to... Uh, to put that on a, on a city council agenda for discussion. Perhaps it's with um, uh, our, our police department or perhaps it's at some other point. Um, but I do think that it's, it would behoove us to, uh, to kind of strengthen up uh, uh, the security across the city, even if it's not ours, uh, but there may be some obligations that we can uh, put in place for, uh, for some of these soft targets, if you will. Because uh, I know there are a lot of uh, a lot of stores, retails, uh, locations, uh, and perhaps the landlords and the and the uh, retailers ought to be able to uh, put a little bit more into security than they're currently doing, and then perhaps collaborate with the police with the uh, the results of uh, of those uh, you know systems. To date, we have been. Uh from the city's perspective, trying to encourage people to put in video surveillance systems at their homes and other locations. And the city offers a rebate program to folks that is uh, still continuing to be used. Uh, I just uh, signed a few of them uh, today that came across my desk. So we are uh, actively getting more and more cameras throughout the community through our camera rebate program, uh, but understand exactly what you're mentioning there in regards to whether or not we can have some certain standards that are put in place for uh, security at certain facilities. So we're going to look for that in a future conversation. Excellent. Thank you. Any other questions at this time? Uh, City Manager. Russ. Let's, let's turn to uh, page 233. All right. That would be street resurfacing. You know, as you all may know, the city currently maintains um, a 193 miles of roads and streets in the city. Um, and uh, this is an ongoing program every year. Currently, we have $3,576,000 set aside in this, which is larger than our normal procedures. However, there's a reason for it, the, um, a good one. So we intend to resurface of streets in the standard fashion. And when Mr. Alderuse and his team go out and using automation, so we can talk about smart cities here a little bit, he uses automation to to gauge the uh, condition of our roads rather than drilling holes the way we did 20 years ago. Um, so that's one million, 
That's two million fifteen thousand dollars. There is also um, a consulting services associated with maintenance planning, thirty thousand. Uh, complete streets um, uh, it, it is there, and then the uh, that's three hundred fifty thousand dollars for that intersection uh, that was one of the residents spoke of earlier today, and finally, in that three million five seventy six is a one million one thirty one um, for the Fifth Street rehabilitation. It's more of a reconstruction of the road, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, during my going through the letter, uh, Fifth Street, there are at least two blocks, maybe a little more, of, of streets that are below the poor rating, or, or, and therefore we simply have to take some action. Or, you know, it, you know the complaints, it could cause an accident, and it certainly not, doesn't meet the standards of the city. Uh, so that's the purpose uh, for the, the, the larger amount of money. And uh, you'll see on the bottom chart, on page 334, that um, all of that money is scheduled to come from the general fund. Any questions about street resurfacing? Yes. Oh, sorry. I'll let you go, council member. It, not super urgent, and we can talk about this offline, but I did want to go into detail on the exact plans for Fifth Street, um, just to see what, what we were uh, thinking and just to save us some time tonight, maybe help for me just call staff tomorrow and or, or maybe or maybe ask for just a written plan of what we're looking at. Well, uh, TV will tell us. Okay. City manager, your mic. Turn on your mic. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Aldous is certainly available to uh, to talk with you at any time. He, he's here now and on the hot seat over there, and. Uh, and we can show you the plans. I'm not sure they're already drawn up, but I'm sure they will be pretty soon. Okay. Yeah. Uh, whenever they're ready, do you mind just sending them uh, to us? Because I know we'll have a lot of folks interested in that. So thank you so much. Oh yeah, I, we've heard from. Them. Oh yeah. <laughs> thank you. Okay. Uh, one quick question as we go through this. I'm curious. With that, I would ask, considering the recent events that have happened, particularly in the Middle East and the concern about petroleum and those things, about a uh, uh, possible growth spike, we may want to go back and look again at how the dollars change and what <coughs> the budget we're looking at, if, if that will adequately treat it. I know you're here at this point and we're doing that, but I would just recommend we just take a quick look again to see if there's anything moving at this point. Well, the uh, certainly I've been paying attention to the uh, potential right. war in the Middle East where the Iranians are threatening to uh, mine the, the, uh, the Straits of Hormuz, and which is where all the tankers go. So that's a problem. It has not affected us yet because um, of Mr. Right. Biden, uh, President Biden's actions. However, there is one other factor here, that we, the United States, are a major oil producer. So the, the cost of, of a project may go up. But uh, because of the world uh, market, but well, you know, because we do produce our own oil here in the states, uh, and uh, that we we should have access to uh, the the asphalt, and and if and if and if the worst comes, it, we'll just have to pay more money and minimize what we do, uh, or or not. Uh -huh. More money. We'll yeah, but my, my, my we'll the basics, the basics of that is supply and demand. Right. Even right. with that, so right. uh, we, we'll cut through that and just say, as I said, just keep an eye on that and just make sure that we have you bet. the adequate funds. That's all. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, quick question on the um, uh, Fifth Street. Do we have any other? locations that are going to need this level of attention uh, in the not too distant future? No, sir. We don't. Excellent. Yes, I have enough pipes to replace, enough other things to worry about. I'm glad to hear that this yeah. is not the beginning of yet another uh, major capital uh, uh, fund uh, expenditure on an ongoing basis. Thank you. Outside of that. Hey, one, one quick point on that. City manager. Yes. Um, one of the things we're saying on Fifth Street is that 
the street, the, the level of the street, correct? Is it below the drainage? What is it that's causing? Well, the subgrade has failed. And also we need extensive repairs and build of curbing and gutter and, and all the amenities that a, a, a good, a typical city of Bowie street needs. Mm -hmm. And so we, in order to reconstruct, we have asked uh, one of our consultants many years ago to give us an estimate. And we put that estimate to present value, but we have a description exactly to uh, item by item of what are the type of things that w w we need to do. I guess what I was getting at is, is, is a part of the problem that the street is flooding? Uh, uh, well, it's one of, the, one of the many things that is, but the, the main aspect of the deficiency is the subgrade has failed. So we cannot repave it. We have to rebuild it. Okay, well, why I was asking that question is about uh, if we could look at getting some, just aside, getting some additional funds as we've seen money being distributed for, for uh, uh, water and, and flooding and different things like that. That is an uh, issue. Uh, we may be able to look at some other parts of money to get some assistance for that. Yeah, I can, I can give you some insight on that too. Okay. Okay. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Gentlemen, anyone? All right, thank you, city manager. We can move on. Well, yes, sir. And, and by the way, if, if by chance uh, if we are lucky enough to have the asphalt prices rise, I'll certainly come back and ask for more money. And we're certainly going to look for uh, we'll look for some grants. We all, well, Jesse and his team are always doing that. And yeah. see what we come up with um, with this street. But I, I think the biggest problem with this street is that it's, it's, it's old and it's run down and I'm not sure how we let it get to this point. No, because we don't have any streets like that. Yeah. Anymore, and, and city manager, just as a point of reference for everybody as we move on, is that there is monies, not just in grant here, but I'm talking about actual pots of money where they can come in, especially where they're doing uh, flood control and other things. And if we have that issue, we can specifically target those dollars. But we got to request them. Okay. And, uh, so so how, how would we do that, sir? Yeah, we'll do that. What, what part of and money I, are you referring to? I'll share, to? like I said, some some, okay. some parts on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you very much. I always keep having one more thing. You know, always uh, <laughs> need to move on more. I just moved you need, on. Right? need to move on more quickly so I don't think of these things to get uh, distracted with the new shiny object. Um, can you share with me the list of streets uh, that are, are going to be uh, uh, paved uh, in, the, in the coming fiscal year? Absolutely. We have that list. Out, outstanding. You, you want a map or you want a list? Uh, a, a list would be good. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll share it with you. We have, apparently we have more than one interested party uh, as well, so the whole council will be more than happy. Thank you very much. Yeah, you can send it out. <laughs> Thank you. Is that it? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, that I see a hand? Uh, yes, Councilwoman Ender Bamadu. Um, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, I just wanted to really applaud the effort to leverage technology to really like be innovative. I think that's a really great new addition. Sorry, I don't, my camera, sorry, it's cutting off my face. I think that's a really, really great new addition. So I just wanted to really call attention to that and say that's, that's awesome. Um, the only thing, it's not really a question for staff, but just context for some of my district, because I know I'm getting some text messages, people are watching. The street resurfacing is not associated with the strip the striping that we spoke about in previous council hearings a couple of weeks ago, staff is working on compiling that and putting together a list. And I know that Assistant City Manager Mears sent me an email that once staff compiles that list, then they will reach out and they will send that to council and then we'll go from there. So I just wanted to add context from my constituents that are watching. This is separate from the striping in terms of the objective towards speeding or decreasing speeding. So this is separate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Councilwoman. All right, I think that's it. Before Mayor Pro Tem thinks of something else, uh, City Manager, go right ahead. All right, thank you, Ms. Mayor. <laughs> I'd like to start on page 235, which is um, a sediment and control for the Maryland Science and Technology Center, uh, a special tax district. And, and um, 
So in, in short here, we'll need to uh, be cleaned up at, of sediment in FY 2100. And uh, there's an estimated $9,518,245. Now, uh, just for clarity for, 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 the, for the people listening, this is, this, is, this is paid for through a special tax by, by the businesses associated with the pond. And you can see on page 235, the pond is listed pond, as pond A and pond B there. Now, our stormwater division of, 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 of uh, employees specifically man manage the stormwater structures that are in the residential area, and there's no extra fees associated with that. Uh, any questions about the sediment control in the Maryland Science and Technology Center? Uh, as you can see, we're um, $138,000 is being added in mm -hmm. to the pot so that we can have the money to do the project. Any questions? No questions. If not, we'll go to sediment control with Bowie Town Center uh, in parentheses Centennial Park. Um, this was... Uh, This project is 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 uh, it's anticipated that stormwater management and pond will need cleaning and sediment in 2115. The reserves have been set aside in anticipation of dredging, and um, as you can look on page 238, you'll see that uh, 64,000 dollars has been set aside for that, and then at some point the total will be 1,637. Any questions about that sediment control related to Bull Town Center, Centennial Park? I see no questions. Let's move forward. All right. The uh, sediment control for High Bridge is not an active project this year, so we'll move on to uh, sediment control Gateway Center, which is uh, planning uh, at 43,700 is being put into the, the pot. Uh, the um, Estimated in uh, that, that in 2026, um, this will be dredged and with a cost of $249,100. Any questions about that sediment control special tax district issue? I see none. Continue. All right, All right. we're moving along. Thank you, city we're moving along with MoGas here. All right, sediment control Covington. Uh, this will be clean, scheduled to be clean in 21. 02 at a cost of 44,782,200 as $31,000 set aside and be added to the pot um, in 2025. And, uh, okay. okay. Stormwater management, which is a, um, a separate project that I mentioned, this is run by the public works department. Um, and primarily these are in civilian and residential districts. Um, so if you will flip to page 246, looking at um, 2025, Neighborhood Drainage Solutions is $150,000, Consultant Dredging Reports for two years, $40,000, Idlewild Lane Drainage, Ditch Improvement, Construction, $260,000, and the Calvert, the Bridge and, and Culvert Repairs at $200,000. So, um, now, this bridge and culvert repair is a, an unfunded mandate, uh, but Prince George's County DPI inspects our bridges and culverts. So we have to have this money available to deal with any repairs that are required. Any questions regarding stormwater management project on page 245 and 246? I don't see any, city manager. Okay. Continue. All right. Um, Public Works main facility. Um, this is an active facility, active project, which basically is to replace the salt dome that we had in, in parking area associated area at the, at the facility, and it costs nine hundred ninety thousand dollars. As you all know, it snows here, and uh, and and we have to store the salt that costs it's really expensive, and and avoid uh, runoffs and all that sort of thing. So that's the purpose of that. That's what's going to happen at the main facility, and the Public Works Department will be managing that, that project. Any questions about that? I see no questions. 
All right, uh, 249, streets and, and utilities building. Uh, it's $36,000 project. If you flip the page 250, you'll see that it's a simple replacement of the HVAC system that currently exists. Any questions about that CIP project? I see none. The next one is facilities preventive maintenance. I think Byron mentioned earlier, uh, Mr. Matthews mentioned earlier that one of the things we do is we we add this this pot of money so that we can maintain all the facilities that we have, and uh, and and so it is cumulative of all of our preventive maintenance systems within the city, and currently um, we have seven hundred ninety one thousand dollars that we're going to be putting in there, and that's coming from the general fund, but it's for um, uh, rooftop rooftop unit repairs. HVAC repairs, all those things that simply have to happen, and, and the maintenance of all the facilities, parks and grounds, facility, public works, museum, here, Ken Hill, Senior Center. That's where the money comes from that we maintain our systems and buy things and replace things, flooring, carpet, all that. Any questions about facilities, preventive maintenance uh, budget? If there are any, go, keep going. solid waste and administrative facility, uh, there is a zero that is not an active project. The next one is um, Chesapeake Bay on page 255. Now, this is a, um, on December the 29th of 2010, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency established a Chesapeake Bay total maximum daily load. And the acronym for that is TMDL. It's a comprehensive pollution diet to restore clean water to the Chesapeake Bay and regions associated with the streams and rivers. And as a result, we have to conduct a certain amount of tax taxing and take a certain degree of actions to, to protect the bay. But there were no fund, there's no funding associated with it. So on page 256, you'll see we're gonna be doing the following things to maintain our MS4 radiance. We're gonna uh, restore the saddle book stream by a cost of $30,000. Stream, rest, stream, stream restoration uh, MS for the MS4 is $77,000. Stream re restoration MBMS3, $80,000. And stream restoration for MBMS3 is $1,348,800. Um, Jose, could you explain what those uh, acronyms mean to the to the? It means mill stream uh, about the MS, and the uh, there are two places, two locations. One is MS three, and the other one is MS four. That are consecutive uh, places at, at, at that particular stream. Um, we have uh, eighty thousand for the study in for MS three and one million three hundred forty-eight dollars uh, for the actual work. Any questions regarding the Chesapeake Bay uh, mandate that, that we have here? And it's been here as long as I've been in the city. Uh, Councilman uh, Staff. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Steve. For this particular project, um, could you guys also just send me uh, uh, anything you have as far as what's ready on it? Because uh, I'm sure residents in Saddlebrook will, will want to know what's coming. Uh, I know the Public Works did a great job uh, with past uh, similar projects in other neighborhoods, kind of giving residents a head up and giving them the opportunity to, to share their thoughts, understanding there's limitations and we kind of have to do what the state mandates. So you want the state, well, actually, there are federal requirements that the state enforces, so you want those as well as what has been done to date. Actually, no, just anticipating the work that's going to be done in Saddlebrook. Yeah. If you guys could just send me exactly what's going to be done, um, that'll give me an idea what we may need to communicate to residents just so they're aware of what's coming. I know Northridge um, had a lot of concerns about some work we did there over the last couple of years. I know uh, in other parts of town, we've just needed to do a little informing you know the public and making sure they kind of knew knew what was coming so i'm just curious to see what exactly is planned in saddlebrook um just so i understand will do all right go right ahead 
Oh, the salt, the Wait, salt size on. salt uh, facility, uh, that is not a funded product, but we are looking, um, we're looking for federal funds so we can take this to the next step or other monies. Uh, it's, it's not critical, but we have this, this distance situation when our people leave, get their salt at Public Works, have to go all the way down to 214 and, and do their work in uh, that neighborhood and then come back and refill. It. We, it would be better if we had a facility down there. But we're not looking to fund it through the, um, um, the, uh, the, the, the general fund. And uh, even though it says that that's inaccurate, we're looking, we'll be looking for grant funds for that. All right, so um, the Bowie Playhouse has uh, a $10,000 budget. Um, and that's for, we have air handlers, air handler unit number three, which is a lobby unit that needs to be replaced. Uh, so that's what that 10,000 is for. The, uh, any questions about that? Uh, if none, the uh, Bel Air Stable Museum is, is not an active project this year. Um, so I'll go to 363, but Allen Pond Park, we already talked about that a bit already. Uh, we're going to, we intend to replace the amphitheater and, and, and there's a, it's said twice, and renovate the uh, boathouse restrooms to include adult changing areas. So that's what that one million five is for. Any questions about Ellen Pine Park? If not, we'll proceed to uh, 265, which is White Marsh Park, uh, which is $935,000 set aside there. And on page 266, you can see that they renovate the synthetic turf pending results of annual inspection um, and the installation of natural exploration area, and that's $200,000. Uh, 235 for the first issue. That's what's going on there. Uh, any questions about White Marsh Park? Uh. And we have a question. Sorry. Uh, Councilman, the staff. Two quick things. One, I love the work you guys have done at White Marsh uh, this past year. Uh, it looks absolutely fantastic. I'm really grateful to staff for some, some cool creativity there. Um, I keep getting questions from folks about the synthetic turf field at White Marsh specifically and whether we recycle it or how we get. Uh, apparently, this is a concern to folks who are uh, uh, climate conscious. And so I just I wanted to ask because uh, I know it's come up before. Certainly. So the process when they uh, redo the synthetic turf is they literally use a machine that's like a big vacuum. They suck up all of the rubber infill, it has rubber infill and, and sand um, byproduct basically that helps the drain. They pull up the carpet, uh, they put the new carpet down and they use that same material back in the, in the, uh, the new product that they put down. So nothing is getting pulled up and then shipped somewhere? Uh, there might be some some small byproduct, the, the carpet, as, as an example. But Interesting. The, the rubber infill, which most people are concerned with, or is okay. actually recycled on site in the new product um, that, that you put down. I'm no expert, but that sounds really good. Yeah. So, great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. All righty. Any other questions? Seeing none, go right ahead, city manager. All right. So, who are you guys here? Brewery Ice Arena provides indoor ice skating for community residents. The uh, majority of the available ice time will is, is devoted to um, uh, a, to public skating, group lessons, ice rentals, hockey. This program is provided provides a, for facility improvements to include major equipment replacement, facility renovation, and FY 2025, the construction of a new ice rink at uh, Bowie Golf Course will begin. So flipping to the next page, you'll see um, given a vote to uh, move the project forward in the next couple of months, I think. We're almost there. Um, the estimated cost the, of, the, of what we would have to borrow would be approximately 30 million, 355. Um, so, and, and most of that and the debt service associated with it would come from, um, first it'd be a general operation bond and then the debt service uh, associated with it uh, in, in out years. Any uh, questions about the Bowie Ice Ring? 
saying none, you can move on. All right. Pope's Creek Park has no, it's, it's an inactive project. Church Road Park is an inactive project. Jericho Park is an inactive project. And therefore, uh, we're at 275, which is Parks and Grounds Annex, the NCN uh, property. Uh, that's where we have our solar facilities, too. Um, on page 276, you'll see that um, the A&E and installation of a new coal storage building for $275,000 is planned. Uh, Nick, could you explain what will we We'd be putting in that building? Yeah, so we will be putting partial grounds equipment, uh, leaf, some of the leaf uh, collection equipment, get it out of the elements and, and making sure that stuff is inside. Um, over the last year, we've we tore down two uh, dilapidated barns that were on site um, that was previously storing equipment. So we need to make sure that we have a place, a dry storage place. Thank Any you. Any questions? Hearing none, moving on. All right, uh, thank you, sir. Uh, Bill Air Mansion is not an active project uh, this year, and that takes us to 279, which is the Bowie Golf Course. Uh, it's a 130 acre, 18 hole golf course that is managed, run, and maintained by a third party. We all went through that a few years ago. This page provides a, uh, various course improvements and systems. Uh, upgrades and, and such. We, we in the last seven, eight years, uh, when the uh, previous arrangement was failing, we put a significant amount of money uh, into the golf course and we're gonna do it, we plan to do it again. A driving range re renovation includes, which include restrooms, which are necessary, uh, and for $5.4 million and then some strategic, uh, strategic tree and landscaping planning for $60,000. Now, the driving range uh, will be a, an income generator. And we believe that if, if not an enterprise fund and paying it for itself, it will be really close. And of course, we'll, this, this, this will involve not only the driving range, but facilities for people uh, that don't exist I mean, we're, we're, we're making it work, but that, this will make it a much more civilized experience uh, and, and a lot, lot more fun. And believe me, we draw more um, users of the, of, the, of the golf course because I don't play golf now, but I, and when I did, I used to like to go out and warm up so that I could really have a bad time when I was playing. <laughs> now, um, so any questions regarding Bowie Golf Course? Saying none, moving right ahead. All right, the next one is public art, which is $25,000. Hold on. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, in reading this uh, in the out years, there's an entry here that says uh, demolish, condemn clubhouse, and complete utility disconnect relocations. The next year is construct maintenance building, but there's no reference. Are we, what happens to the clubhouse? So the golf um, management company is prepared to handle that out of a modular type structure um, until we ultimately get a, a more permanent solution. And, but there's no cost associated with that? That would be covered under their operating costs. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to the public, public art. Yes, $25,000. Uh, public art is an ongoing effort by the city of Bowie through its arts and committee in that administers the program. And if you look at page 282, you'll see that um, uh, there's a $25,000 annual addition to that fund uh, coming from the fund balance. And uh, I, I, I believe I'm correct. We work in concert with the committee uh, on it to uh, determine what the funds will be used for. Any questions about the public art? See no questions. Please move ahead, City Manager. All right, Black Sox Park is, is not an active project. However, the Bowie Railroad System on 285 is a uh, museum there and uh, $718,600. Um, if you look at page 286, uh, you'll see that um, we've got 718 implementation and construction of the Railroad Museum improvements. 
which includes a connection to the 10th Street Park and renovation, uh, facilitates train watching, uh, connects to the Heritage Trail, and there's also involved in relocating the caboose. Now also, not reflected here, is a $90,000 grant uh, uh, that, that will help defray costs associated with this uh, railroad museum. Any questions regarding that? Hearing none, moving on. All right. So Glen Allen Park is not an active uh, project. The indoor court for this year, the indoor court facility is not active this fiscal year. Theoretically, it should be in next year's budget. And the Bowie Trails is an active project. Uh, and if you, on page 291, and on the back, on the next page on 292, under FY 2025, you'll see that Jericho Trail segment construction uh, completion will, will be 371. The bituminous trail repairs, replacements along North View Drive for 275. The Pinnell Parkway Trails extension for another $120,000. Twenty-nine thousand dollars, totaling five seventy-five. Um, so, any questions about the trails plans here? Any questions? Hearing none, we can move on. Okay, we're going to go. You're going to hand out regarding Centennial Park that uh, the deputy <coughs> finance director is passing out. Uh, so, of course, you know Centennial Park is located behind City Hall. 20 acres of uh, recreation space used by everybody in the county, that, by my observation, but that's okay. If, uh, if you look at the, the flip over that the handout, you'll see that there is a $150,000 set of, uh, plan to replace our outdoor fitness equipment at uh, seven fitness stations with modern equipment, including park improvements. The old equipment was dilapidated and had to be removed. It wasn't safe anymore. And so we're prepared to, to do this. And so please add that to your uh, packets and drop the, um, the old one. Okay, so any questions about Centennial Park? If not, uh, we'll go to the Tanglewood Park on 295. Just one quick question. I'm sorry, city manager. For those of us that are in the room, can that be emailed to us or something, the handout? Certainly, uh, finance director will do that okay. tonight. Great, we'll thank you. Well, so in the morning, for sure. Um, Tomorrow, yeah, not tonight. Thank you. I shouldn't work and make him stay late, huh? Okay, I won't. All right, you got to replieve there. All right. So Tanglewood Park, uh, that is an active pro uh, project, fifty thousand dollars. If you go to page two ninety six, you'll see that the trail system improvements, benches, uh, benches, way, way marking and signage and ground material mulch and all that. Also, um, this, is, this was a, a, a natural area that is now technically being reverted back to parks. So one of the things that our contractors are having to do is clear the trails that are, not, that are natural trails. By that, I mean just soil, not, not asphalt or soft asphalt. So, um, so it's, we're going to be um, objective is to, it's about four and five miles of trails over there, and objective to make it safe uh, removing the dead trees or you know, any hanging dead tree hazards, uh, and uh, and uh, my neighbor, I got a couple of neighbors that are really enthusiastic Tanglewood Park guys. So the, if this passes, they'll be really happy. Any questions about Tanglewood Park? Um, Councilman staff, thank you so much, Mr. Mayor. Um, a resident in the area asked about the uh, benches that are listed in twenty five, twenty six, and twenty seven. Um, as I understand it, there's already some benches around the park area. Do we know exactly what we're doing to those benches? Uh, or is that something you guys can just email me about this week and I can read about it later? I, I can get that to you. Thank you. I appreciate you. that. Very good. Any other questions? <laughs> if not, right. why don't we move on? So Serene Way Park. Now, just for people listening out there, this, you may not know about this one. <laughs> Introducing Serene Park a forthcoming micro park discreetly tucked away within the once neglected stretch of road, bridging the gap between the Bowie Annex and Spark Lane. 
This, this initiative aims to tackle local apprehensions regarding the misuse of this area by rejuvenating and the abandoned asphalt into a lively green haven. Might well written, I must say. At, uh, if you'll go to page 298, uh, you'll see um, a master plan for future miniature park is, is what we're gonna be planning for this year. And uh, that is the last of the projects we're gonna talk about at this session. We'll talk about the water system projects later. Any questions about Serene Way Park? One moment, uh, Council Member Brady. Thank you, Mayor. Um, on this last item, the Serene Way Park, um, my wife and I, when I was out campaigning before I got injured, it ran across this and I thought, it's a little bizarre. There's that back entrance to the, to the annex, that the fence is off, and they've got the planters there. Yeah. Does that essentially make that segment of the roadway abandoned? And can we pull up the asphalt? Is that what part of the plan will include? That, that is correct. Um, when we were notified by the residents and, and uh, Councilman uh, Wolfley um, about this particular issue and the neighbor's concerns. Uh, we got out there and, and where the fence, which you've obviously seen the site now, um, yeah. the fence was there. There was trees growing up through it. There was no access um, so per se. Um, so yes, we are gonna go in there. We're going so we're to done. tear up the asphalt um, section and create a green space. The uh, $20,000 that's called for in the, uh, in the budget is to do uh, master plan projects us with the uh, with the residents there to to hear them and and understand what they would like to see happen on that that parcel okay it's a good good project thank you thank you thank you any other questions uh mayor pro tem yes thank you mr mayor i want to uh, do a quick go back to page 269 which is pope's creek park uh we recently acquired property uh to expand that park uh, to, I think, which I, I guess it's to the west side, if memory serves me, um, for the, uh, uh, to enlarge the park that had been, uh, I think had been state uh, owned. I, I, I'm trying to remember, it uh, doesn't much matter. Uh, it's ours now. Um, and the, the expectation was that we would be uh, in a position to make use of some of that property for some overflow parking of some, uh, of some nature which is not to say necessarily that it's gonna be in, quote, this budget year, uh, but that there might be something between now and the, the current plan right now has it for way out into, uh, well, and beyond, uh, I guess it's Buzz Lightyear uh, time frame here uh, to infinity and beyond. Uh, but I think that uh, the, the, the whole purpose of the acquisition was to mitigate some of the uh, problems we were having, which was, overflow parking in the neighborhood, uh, making it difficult for uh, people to get in and out, and also concern for safety of kids bouncing in and out of uh, parked cars on the side of the road. Uh, can staff take a look at what we can do in the interim uh, in, the, in the form of uh, some sort of low cost, uh, you know, overflow parking for that uh, environment? Um, we have taken a look at the site as far as low cost, you know, throwing mm -hmm. out millings. Uh, the topography wise, it, that won't work. You have to jump right into the, uh, the, the permanent solution. Um, and that would be a policy decision as far as what year that would come in. Okay. All right. Uh, if you would uh, share with me what, what that looks like uh, in terms of the, um, uh, the scope and scale of that. Uh, maybe we can have a little conversation and we can figure out where we want to put that in uh, for out years. Sure. I think it won't be this coming year. No, understood. <laughs> Good deal. Thank <laughs> but, you. But I do, but, uh, but, the, but the timing on it for, uh, you know, 2030 plus uh, is, is, is... Too far out. Is too far Understood. Out. Yes, yep. sir. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Anyone? Do all we hear none, City uh, Manager. Well, that concludes our work for this evening, sir. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We appreciate council members, staff, for all your hard work, and to those who stayed up and watched what we were doing. Well, well, thank you. Well, we'll go at it hard next Monday, too. Sir. Sounds good. But, all with, right. Thank you. With our big departments. <laughs> good job. Thank you very much, man.
Hey, Daniel. 